Bless up for tuning in to Project Cheney. Magic happens when you question everything. Conspirituality becomes reality, weirdness is welcomed, and it's okay to change your mind. Big up yourself. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of Project Cheney. As always, I'm Cheney, and I am very excited today to have with me Kara Mosher. But before we get into all that and my um, fawning over Kara, I wanted to go over my list of things I wanted to talk to you about this week. Uh, It is probably going to be a little out of order and sporadic, but... You know, things don't go in any kind of orderly way. I will try to bring it all back around to Kara to give her some kind of good energy to go into because I'm going to get weird right at the beginning. Try not to F my own algorithm right away. Um, But I will start out with uh, the building being demoed in Miami. Uh, The rest of the building, the 13-story building that I vented about a little on the beginning of my last week's show, the 13th-story building that was built in the 1980s that had structural failure, but only half the building came down. And, you know, they were trying to get a whole bunch of rubble, and it's the equivalent to me of them doing a search and rescue and then them bringing down the other half of the building on top of where they're supposedly during the search and rescue is asinine. It's really one of the craziest things I've ever heard. And uh, they're doing it all under the guise of, well, there's a storm coming. Look at this bad storm. You have to do this. So, you know, otherwise this building will be in so much danger of coming down. Well, you know what's a bigger danger than buildings falling during hurricanes? Uh, Loose debris. Loose debris like boards and rods and things to fly around. That's what causes a lot of havoc during hurricanes. So why don't we just add, you know, twice the size pile of loose debris? That's a fucking clever idea. Uh, I just think that whole building in Surfside from from the first uh, drop to everything they say on the news to the constant dictation of any time the official story, whatever the official narrative is, anytime it comes out within 12 hours of a crime, how on earth, how on earth are you to know so quickly that it isn't a terrorist act or it isn't, uh, I don't fucking know, fairies lifted up the parking garage. I think more people should be interested that there is a parking garage in Miami Beach so close to the water. Um, What else is going on under there? Anyways, that was a little anger to start out uh, the whole thing. But that whole, it's just uh, another false flag. Is there any people in there? I don't know. The accounted for never go down. Um, Well, I guess they have of recent. But you know what I'm saying. Everything's just, uh, it just seems like a big loosh of us. Uh, So the building thing, um, the third and fourth, um, the third of July, I actually drove to Sarasota and saw Trumpy and Donald Trump Jr. and General Flynn and Kimberly Guilfoyle and all these conservatives speak. And that was pleasant as always. If you haven't been to a Trump rally, I highly suggest it to everyone. It'll change your mind about whatever. If you're a Trump hater. Um it'll change your mind about whatever you think his followers are. And if you're a Trump lover, uh, you owe it to yourself to be around uh, people that are uh, like-minded enough that you feel like you're not so alone in the social, you know, social media makes you feel like you're a pariah or something. Is that even a word? (laughs) I know you use these words and I'm like, what does that even mean? Um, But yeah, so I went and that was really uplifting and, uh, it was pretty funny. Like Trump's like, what have I, what, what have I been wrong about so far? I told you guys about hydroxychloroquine. I was right about that. I told you guys about the border wall. I was right about that. I told you guys about, uh, Hunter's laptop. I was right about that. I told you guys about the Wuhan lab and the virus. I was right about that. What do you think I'm going to be right about next? The election. 
And um, I don't want to trigger any of Kara Mosher's awesome fans that are coming over here. And like, I didn't know I was tuning into this fucking podcast to hear some girl talk about Trump. But uh, yeah, if you don't know that Trump's still our president, um, you need to, you only, you, <laughs> you're part of the way there. I'm sorry. And if you think it doesn't matter, um, then uh, what's the point of always stealing our quote unquote casted votes if um, they obviously need them for some reason energetically, our cast, our signature, our approval, our observation must matter. So um, it's a spiritual war. If you um, don't see that in president and leader picking and the kings and queens of it all, um, you know, you're missing a whole big piece of the picture, I think. And uh, community and energy and people and vibes, all that kind of stuff's important. And one side has been kind of um, fighting for things they love for the last X amount of years. And the other side has been uh, fighting against what they hate for the last X amount of years. And I think it shows in their energy that one side has been living in hate and one side has been living in love. And when you're around it, uh, it's so evident and truth resonates. Uh, stop letting the TV tell you who people are and go out and touch them and feel them for yourself. Stop letting the media tell you about a virus and go out and touch people again. Stop letting the media tell you to wear a mask. It, it, the media has been wrong 100% of the time. The virus, the mask, the Trump, the Hillary, the Tom Hanks, the pedo gate, the pizza gate, the WikiLeaks, everything they tell you is the opposite of the truth. And I don't know how many of these things I have to point out for people to eventually get it, whether you worship in Hollywood or whether you're a Catholic, uh, I can point it out. You pick your poison and I'll tell you where their symbology is of how it's somehow a bastardization of your connection to the whole. Anyways, that was a weird thing to do from Trump, but it's on my list and I'm ranting to you. This is the beginning of my show. Um, I don't know how long my rants are going to get, so I don't even want to say fast forward to this time and then you don't have to listen to me rant because that's why you're here. <laughs> they're not all going to be good. And uh, I might change my mind about them. So please do not worship at the Church of Cheney because I could change my mind tomorrow. And you will be like, but wait, I worshiped at that thought that you had. And I thought that, um, no, don't worship here. Don't worship here. Anyone out there that wants you to follow their cult, run from them. Anyone out there that you hear, yes, some people have really good ideas. They want to set up healing centers and they want to um, help people meditate and they want to, yeah, some people are like that. But a lot of people just want to get their fucking pocket fat and their dick wet. And when you get that sense that somebody... I see it out there a lot, you know, in spiritual world and online world and podcast world and chat rooms. And there's so many fucking wannabe cult leaders out there. And I see through them so quick and they're, and it, it, it irks me in this way of, um, when you fuck with a human's vulnerability through their spirit to somehow get laid or get your ego fed, you're like fucking around karmically with next level shit. Like, you're not just uh, screwing around with, like, some girl you met at a bar. You're playing this long game to, or or dude, for that matter. I'm just speaking from uh, my perspective. If you're, like, playing this long game of trying to get into somebody's pants or feed off their energy or take their ideas or you want a lot of people to fawn over you or you think that your ideas, your connection to source is more divine than everybody else's connection. You, like those kind of people be so fucking weary of. A lot of people like to project that on like QAnons. Like they're a cult or they like to be like, they, well, you just worship Jesus or like you think Trump's Jesus. No, no. 
no, that's not true at all. That's how nobody thinks. In fact, I would even go as far as to say a lot of most of the QAnons actually believe in Jesus. So it would it would go against what they think to think Trump was a Jesus figure to them. Um, they believe in Trump like they believe in each other. Like maybe there's a good person that's actually fighting for us. Like what a crazy fucking idea that there actually could be a good person out there fighting for you. Uh, but back to the cult leader of it all, that projection that people want to see in Trump. Um, there's a lot of swarmy women and dudes out there that are playing on people's chakra and kundalini and jacking up their spine and drinking their piss of it all. And they're really just out there to create their own cult. Like their narcissist needs your energy. They need your observation of their power. I just think people need to be aware of that. We're going toward this. You hear people throw around 4D and 5D and 6D and all these Ds and timelines and dimensions. And it's all just more ways the same as you might find it very easy these days to look out Ron L. Hubbard and Scientology and be like, oh, that's cultish. Or maybe even you might be a person that feels like you're so above that you look at the Catholic Church and you're like, oh, that's cultish. Or you look at Mormons or you look at QAnons or you look at uh, people doing tarot. I don't even know. You look at witches, whatever. And you're like, that's cultish. If anyone is trying to make you follow them or they tell you that they see something that nobody else sees or they get something nobody else gets, uh, I'm not saying every people aren't special, but it doesn't need following. Like spirit, source, God working through me doesn't need you to fawn at my feet. It doesn't need you to... Uh, you know, wash my fucking feet with your hair. It doesn't need you to suck my dick or eat my pus. It doesn't need any of these gross things. It just needs the presence of you and your communion and your communion to share back with me. If it's not a reciprocal thing, yes, some people you can fucking learn from. Some people are spiritually attached to things that you want so badly, like they, they have gifts in psychic or they're just a yoga master or they're good at Reiki or they're good with prayer or they're good with guided meditation. Everybody has gifts. But the second that they need some worship from you or they require you to see them on some kind of pedestal or take some kind of law or they make you question your authentic attachment to source, run from that cult leader. You are the divine one. You are the, the one that's attached to the higher power in a way I could never teach you how to do it. You might uh, mirror some things I do because you like them and I, I, and I might mirror things you do and you might have good advice for me or you might not tell me things but have a friend that has good advice for me and we all work in this way to slowly like rising waters. We all rise the ships together and that's how us as a whole become better. We commune like a round table of, of faith, of ideas, of knowledge, of knowing. We don't sit where I, Cheney, have so much more knowledge and I'm so much more connected than you. And I just shake my head at your, it, it, it gives me this like spiritual sympathy over spiritual empathy. And that big difference of sympathy, this like ego of me sitting there shaking my head on my pedestal. Oh, you poor humans. Like, it's just such a it, it happens again and again, and I feel like it's definitely one of the things I, ca I can sniff ego on people. And it's my own, I'm sure. It's the projection. And for what it's worth, though, I know that I am never going to be a cult leader. Ever, 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 ever. But I see so many people desperate. If somebody just gave them a piece of land and a pedestal, they'd be on it in a second. And I just, especially out here in the like new agey conspiracy of it all, because it's like everybody's internal 
picnic, you know, we all had these picnic, these lives set up 2018, 2019. And somewhere in 2020, someone just grabbed the corners of our picnic basket and just shook our shit all over the lawn. That's what everybody spiritually feels like. And when everybody feels like all out of sorts like that, it makes it ripe pickings for the vultures and the hyenas and the people that are just going to come in. They don't want to do any of the fucking work. They just want to pick the fucking meat of the dead. And um, in a place that we're at where spiritually we're supposed to be holding the line for each other, if you're a person out there taking advantage of somebody else's spirit to uplift you in any selfish way, whether that be sexually or egoically or, um, karma is a real deal. And that shit, when you mess with someone's spirit, I think it, it will haunt you in a way that, um, like a spell or a curse would never do. It's something deeper than that. And, um, yeah, yeah. It, it actually, it's kind of perfect. I'll just kind of get this heavy stuff out of the way since I'm, I didn't even intend on really talking about all that stuff and cult leaders of it all, but, um, or even like the Q anon religion of it all. But I mean, it should be said for all the people out there that hate Q. I do, um, definitely see that side too and the fears of it, um, of anyone. And I, they see people definitely in the movement of all these movements that worship, at it. And I would say if you're a Q worshiper, uh, this message is for you too. like, be careful. Um, you know, when you hold a mortal man to God, like standards, they're always going to fall short. And, uh, we're all kind of doing this together. Everybody's an important piece and your piece is not any less than anybody else's. You might not have figured out what your piece is yet, for the whole, but we're patient. We're all in this together. And it might be a little of my piece and a little of that person's piece and a little of that person's piece. And collectively, it all might make this very special piece that you are, that without you figuring it out, we will never have that piece of God. And so you really have to start seeing whatever you admire about people the same way we project their shitty shit you know like we're like look at that asshole look at that selfish asshole i'm like oh shit cheney you're a selfish asshole um sometimes that's true in the good too where you're like wow i really admire that person's kindness whoa cheney maybe sometimes you're kind too and i think we need to do this stuff with each other um where was I? Um, maybe it wasn't supposed to go there if I don't remember it. Uh, da, 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 da. A rabbit hole I want you guys to look into if you're into the Pizzagate Epstein of it all. If you don't know who Rachel Chandler is, um, you should definitely find out who she is. Everybody has specific names. Everybody has specific roles. Um, the people you can find her with from a very young age to where she's at now um, is very interesting from Obama to the Clintons and the Hanks and the whole weirdness of it all. She's all linked through. Um, the last name Chandler, uh, I just think, you know, their symbolism will be their downfall and it's bigger than uh, just swastikas and peace signs. Um, Chandler, the last name, especially for them, means child handler. And when somebody usually carries that last name in this kind of sphere, they uh, procure kind of whatever the taste of some gross, disgusting pig might be toward a young child. And Ray Chandler, Rachel Chandler, she's one of these people. And every time I research her, I think of Chelsea Handler and her name, Chelsea Handler, Child Handler. And her travels, I think of the symbology on her show. I know this is a lot to say because I just call celebrities pedophiles all the time. Um, Chelsea Handler is a very creepy person. Her attachments to Hollywood are creep. Her rise to fame is creepy. Um, yeah, 
that's all I'll say. I think she's a whole rabbit hole of her own, but definitely look into Ray Chandler. One has nothing to do with the other except for their last name. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like some, I have uh, fruit salad thoughts and you guys kind of get that here before I introduce such a lovely, awesome, amazing, beautiful energy like Kara Mosher. So uh, I will apologize once again to her fans if you're finding this for the first time. Uh, please, um, if you're triggered by anything I say and you make all your judgments from that, I should, I should, I don't have to tell any Carrie's fans. I don't have to, I'm trying to not do that in my life anymore where I have to give people this whole, like, I'm not sexist. I just hate the trans agenda. I'm not racist. I just hate BLM. I'm not this. I just hate this. Like I, whatever that's called. Was it clarifying or it's like you're justifying your point before you make it. I don't need to do that with my audience and I probably don't need to do it with Kara's. So, and Kara is one of those people too, for some reason. I, I, I'll say, I say Kara Mosher. I always say her whole name, Kara Mosher. I don't know if you guys have friends like that in your life where you say they're, they're never just Jenny. They're like Jenny Miller, Jenny Miller. Um, I don't have any friends named Jenny Miller, but my favorite is that somebody out there, I hope's name is Jenny Miller and they totally lost their mind and they write me, um, at project Cheney at gmail.com or find me project Cheney on Instagram and, uh, tell me about it. Um, Oh, you guys, the ocean was on fire. <laughs> there was like a portal to hell in the ocean. I'm sure if uh, you guys know about me, you've seen this somewhere on your social media. <sighs> you guys, it's so fucking ridiculous to me. I don't know if I think it's just CGI instantly or because the news all talks about it and then we all Bernie Mittens Tiger King and just run with the viral like we do because we think, look at, I let me get this out first. Let me be just like the fake news and get this out first. There's just something about it that doesn't sit right. Like it's this it, it sits with me like the war hornets or the the the, the end of times of it all. It's like just all part of their really sloppy new world order that isn't going off how it should. So this portal to hell didn't quite open the fear that they, it's like their fake blue beam. They keep trying, the the government just said there's UFOs. And then the next day, no, no, they didn't. Oh, the, the Pentagon just said there's UFOs. And they keep showing us the same shitty like footage that looks like a fly on a crosshair. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about the hole in the ocean. Um, there's like a, a 40,000 pound bomb. I don't even want to speak in bomb poundage. It sounds so queer. Whatever this bomb that they do off the coast of Florida that they let us know they, they do this bomb, which doesn't make any sense. This bomb test. I don't, they, bomb tests are uh, ridiculous. They're ludicrous. It doesn't make any logical sense. Like, let's just destroy all this wildlife in the ocean in this area to do something that we probably could put in a program in the fucking computer and do. Like, it's just... Uh, it does. It, it isn't logically sound to me at all. And I'm told all the time of how much money we spend on the Pentagon and all of these war machines and all this shit for them to just how much millions of dollars was that test bomb again? For what purpose? I just think it's so stupid that that happens. And then on the other side of Florida, a portal to Hades opens up. And hey, you guys, if you just know the way that water can land on fire because gas from the certain tubes that run under that we always tell you about in the middle of the Gulf that we're doing, all this creepy shit that we just tell you, hey, the world's population's this. Hey, the national debt is this. Hey, uh, Saturn's this far away. Hey, this is what a black hole is. Is look at these cartoon drawings and we all just blanketly are like oh that's what a dinosaur sounds like anyone who thinks different than that is dumb I'm the best regurgitator Columbus is my hero oh wait I'm not allowed to say Columbus is my hero anymore I'm racist if I say that oh tell me what to say oh it's indigenous people oh wait it's first citizens oh wait it's what what am I allowed what am okay then I say that and then look at I just learned that today and then you come and you say Indian and now I'm like huh Look at you. Look at you, you pathetic racist. Don't you know it's native persons? And you're like, oh, I just learned it yesterday, but now I'm so pretentious. That is literally the um, 
the politically correct world that we're in now is you learn about something yesterday and then make sure you get online and tell everybody else because you don't want to be at the bottom of the fucking knowledge pyramid of regurgitation. What have they done to you guys? I don't even know how I've got off that tangent. <laughs> I don't even know where I started on that. Oh, the ocean is on fire. Oh, yeah. Because I just, yeah, the ocean can be on fire, I guess. Yeah, there can be volcanoes under the water. Yep, 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 yep. I still um, think the luge event of everybody having to know about it and the fact that it happened in more than one place on the planet. And so they can, the same way as George Floyd with the knee on the neck thing, uh, that happened in other places on the planet at the same time. It's like they need to draw out a very specific energy for their rituals or something. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think about the ocean on fire. There's like meaning behind it bigger than them showing us a gas pipelines leaking it's stupid to me it, it just makes me think if this is the new world order right now that we're living in if this is it it's sloppy as fuck and it's so like lacks a uh, lex luther um even dr evil it even lacks a dr evil fear of like one billion dollars like it's just so it's fucking stupid at this point so um blah 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 um do i want to talk about that eh, it's kind of heavy maybe i'll save that for another day it doesn't it feels like i already yelled at you guys a little bit um I have an actual question that I'd love for you guys. Feel free to contact me anywhere about. Um, do you think that, you know, there's a survival, a survival's guilt. So if we were all in a plane crash together or something and only a few of us survived and, you know, there was 100 people on board and only 10 of us survive, the 10 of us that survived would have a really hard time. Like, why me? Why did God pick me to live? Why did the universe pick me to survive? Why not those people? That person was a mother. That person was a father. That person was young. That person uh, was smart. That person was beautiful. Whatever the, that person is, eh, we get the survive the survival guilt. Um, do you think there's a survival guilt with surviving our traumas sometimes? Uh, even as we cure from them a little bit, like even as we heal ourselves from our past trauma, do you think sometimes energetically or even spiritually there is this maybe one step forward, two step back feeling uh, sometimes because of a guilt that you're going places of healing that maybe other people aren't or maybe people close to you aren't. And um, I actually, this isn't an emotion I have. I was just, um, I was thinking about survivor survival's guilt in general and then thinking about just healing trauma. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird kind of heady question or I don't know if it makes sense but yeah let me know what you think it's def it's on my list so of things I <laughs> wanted to talk to you about so I don't even know if I verbalized it yet or if it's even a well uh, formed idea or thought that sometimes how like something will just enter my brain and then I'll think about it for a couple of weeks. I'll look it up for a couple of weeks. I'll try to say it aloud to a few people I trust for a couple of weeks. And then somewhere in that time, it becomes a well-formed idea. And uh, if I allow myself to be really authentic when I say it and like emotionally touched, if I feel that way or whatever, then I'm allowed to get plugged into like a source energy bigger than me. And it is like um, honey on like wood or it like fills in all the crevices. It's like this, the high vibe spirit of it all kind of gives this like lubricant to the idea or words um, that sometimes I hear them come out of my mouth and I'm like, oh, finally it fucking makes sense. Like I've been digging at this and digging at this and digging at this and I, I finally got this idea to make sense to me. And sometimes I get to the bottom of it and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is what I think at all. <laughs> so um, sometimes it's all for naught, but sometimes it's like um, getting myself out of uh, 
our cognitive bias sometimes sends us into idea bottle bottlenecks where we find our ego gets very comfortable in one school of thought that, you know, the Masons run the world. No, the Zionists run the world. No, the Catholics run the world. No, the, 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 the. and we all fight about these ideas and, um, ever, ever, instead of us sitting sometimes and saying, maybe we're both right. Maybe we're both wrong. And, uh, sometimes I just do that internally with myself. Like maybe I'm right about this. Maybe I'm really wrong about this. Could I argue with myself about this? Could I argue against this? And, um, it isn't about arguing. I just, sometimes you don't even know the idea exists until you come up with the opposition of the idea or, um, the first breadcrumb in the train train of the idea. Um, there's some craziness for the way uh, my mind works. Uh, so I talked to you about, uh, maybe I will save this. I wanted to talk to you guys about detachment as a philosophy on a whole. And if it's even possible for a mom to do, is it possible for a mom to detach from her kids if that's part of the spiritual journey? And then I've also heard like, well, detachment is the root of all sorrow, but I think sorrow is attached to love. Um, blah, blah, blah. Maybe detachment's for another day. I'll have to get somebody else in. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's not a full form thought. We'll go back to that another day. Um... I want to go back to big pharma and the compartmentalization of our health and our body. I have that on my list to talk to you guys about. Um, okay. Uh, do you guys have a bucket list? Do you think it's important to write a bucket list? Uh, do you think bucket list is like a manifestation of your death? Like, are you putting like, I have to get these things out before I die? Or do you think um, it doesn't matter? That's It's just like you're manifesting the thing. Um I don't know. I just, I was wondering if the idea of the term bucket list, like kicking the bucket is like a bad thing to call that list at all. Um, I was thinking about swimming with great white sharks and how I was going to talk to you guys about my bucket list of other things that I want to do. And then I just got lost in the word bucket list. And uh, yeah. So what do you guys think about that too? And um, I guess it, Oh, and if you want, you guys, I was on Mating in the Matrix last week with Human Vibration and My Maria 777. If you haven't checked out Mating in the Matrix, uh, it's a good podcast. They get real, real about all sort of being single in the simulation. And um, it's pretty entertaining. And it's about sex and love and rock and roll and also all the conspiracies and everything, uh, the open-minded woo-woo of it all. Um, that you guys will love it. So you should check out Mating in the Matrix. And I was on that and had a really good time with Human Vibration and my Maria. So listen to that episode. And um, they're both gifted amongst normal people. And speaking about being gifted amongst normal people, I guess it finally brings me to my introduction of Kara Mosher. <laughs> And y'all, Kara Mosher, um, she has Let's Be Friends podcast, and she's an author, and she's a musician, and she's a singer, and she's a healer, and she's a star seed, and she's a whole bunch of things. I could, I probably couldn't have enough words, and there probably isn't enough hours. I know I'm definitely going to have Kara Mosher back, so I hope you guys uh, enjoy her as much as I did. She has a really easy flow of energy, and I just feel like we could talk about anything and go anywhere in conversation and... Um, it would be funny and entertaining. And she is so attached to something different than sometimes I feel like I'm attached to otherworldly things, but when she's talking, I can see her look past, um, at, you know, you hear people talk about seeing auras or, uh, seeing other dimensional beings or these kind of things. And it all sounds so, if you're just a normal person living in the 3d where, you know, you become worm food when you die, I'm sure all this stuff sounds nutso fruitcake, but, um, I don't know. It's not really a miracle 
that just makes you, I don't, I, I feel like I searched my whole life for faith. And one day I just had a knowing, like I just knew I was attached to everything and everyone. I knew that I could control energy. I knew that I was loved further than my flesh. I knew that I was a creator past my wildest dreams. And once you know it about yourself, you can really tell when other people maybe even have it a lot more than you or they have it and don't know it yet. And uh, maybe it's true for anything, you know, maybe good artists see other great artists and, um, you know, maybe great athletes see other great athletes and great lawyers, no great lawyers. I don't know how it works, but Kara Mosher says this thing. Um, I mean, I'll let her say it so much better than me that like, psychics unlock psychics and healers unlock healers. And I just think we're at a place of the where we go when we go all is we're all unlocking each other's gifts. And the higher we climb, the higher we can pull someone else up. And it isn't up to us to always pull someone else up. Sometimes you have to look up and let them pull you up. And sometimes it's not always the same people. I think a lot of us out there have these roles in life where we're always the masculine energy. We're always the provider. We're always the breadwinner. We're always the strong one. We never cry. We always do these things. And, you know, it's really important for all the people that love us um, to allow them to carry our weight sometimes. Allow them, you know, we're, it's like we're all climbing this mountain of life together. And sometimes you can feel it in people that they're carabinered in really well. They have a stronghold. Their grip is tight. And those people, their energy feels so good in a way, you want to jump on their back and sit on their stronghold and sit on their carabiner. But you should just trust those people a little bit and go back on your own rope and let those people teach you how to put a carabiner in. And then you can keep climbing. And no matter what, you're only going to fall back to that carabiner. And I don't know if I've used that um, on this show before. Um, sometimes when I'm talking uh, to my brilliant friends, I forget um, what I said or what somebody else said or um, what I didn't say to you guys. But I do know Kara Mosher is one of those people in the world that... She might have felt like she was falling for a really long time. And the medical community, um, if they had their ruthers, they would have kept her feeling that way. Or maybe even feeling like she landed on a ledge and that was it. There was no more going up, no more going down. This is just a ledge. This is where you sit now on the ledge facing the rock wall. But she's become one of those people that she's like, yeah. You can carabine her in, you can have that safe spot, you can keep climbing, and you can keep carabinering, or you can learn how to use your wings. And then it's like, oh, fuck. I've been climbing up this rock wall for all this time, and you have wings? So it's like maybe Kara Mosher for a period of her life didn't feel roped in or carabinered or any of that, um, but it was because she was learning how to fly. So... I really hope you enjoy this interview with Kara Mosher and go check her out everywhere that you can find her. I love you guys. Thanks for listening to my long ass rant. I hope some of it made sense. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Welcome back to another episode of Project Cheney. I am super lucky today to have one of my new friends, uh, Kara Mosher from the Let's Be Friends podcast. Welcome to Project Cheney. Thank you for having me. I am equally as excited to be here. I'm smiling huge for anybody who can't feel the energy I'm shooting out. I'm, I'm stoked to be here with Janie. Thank you for having me. You're always really good at uh, doing uh, vocal visuals, <clears throat> telling people what you're doing. You're like, if people can't see, I'm doing this with my hands <laughs> right now. If people, you're, all, you're good at it with radio. I like that about your show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I guess it's because I'm always seeing between different dimensions, you know, and I want to just include everything that that I'm experiencing with everyone, including the smile happening right here in this quantum moment. You know, one of the other things I love about your Instagram channel, um, you 
I adore this about you. You got you had like a stone or something. You got like a new stone, and <laughs> you were like. To start off, I don't know anything about stones, but this feels good and I like it. <laughs> and I just like that whole magical vibe of we're all in this like metaphysical place that we think we want these stones. We think we want yeah. crystals around us, but we have no idea why or what they do. And I yeah. like that you were like, I don't know about this, but I have it. And I'm yeah, running with I was it. just I was like, I've been doing this thing where I film my my social media cadence. My boyfriend works in digital marketing and advertising. And so he teaches me tips and I take a day and I just film a bunch of videos and take a bunch of photos. I do my makeup once, do my hair once. I just change the outfit. Oh, There's a little, that, a little secret. I care is not always filming. It's just like one day here and there. And that day, all of a sudden I saw my crystal and I just picked it up and I, I heard in my head, well, I don't know if crystals work, but, and I felt, I just started doing it. And then I stopped and I filled the net and I grabbed another crystal and I just did part two. And then I was like, oh, part three. And I had this whole little crystal thing, but they do, I really do think they work. So that's the truth about that. I think they work too. I just like that. We're, I just think we're all in this place in this woke movement where we, everybody's pretending they know everything about everything. So it's like, you know, you're seeing these other dimension and feeling these next level feelings and talking to these different entities that everyone would assume. Well, Kara knows what citron is. I don't even know if citron's <laughs> a stone. <laughs> that was one that I used, that I talked about. That was part, um, part two or part three. And yeah, no, it's, I just, I woke up, like I call my quantum awakening in my memoir, here comes trouble, which is publishing very soon talks all about, um, I woke up really fast and I had to learn about like the fact that we lived in a simulated universe at the same time. I remembered I could heal myself without medicine at the same time. I learned I was psychic at the same time. I was like feeling like I needed crystals everywhere. <laughs> and so I just got them not, you know, I started investing money in these crystals, like like the citron learning that you can manifest with that and, and bring in abundance. And so I did, a, I took my Ganesh statue. I mean, I'm just like falling all into all of this, like big time. And cause Ganesh is like, to me, the, like the God, the Hindi God, the elephant face who brings in abundance and helps remove obstacles. And I put that citrine, that big old beautiful citrine next to it, buying it literally for abundance in my life. And I kid you not, I have had so much abundance in my life new opportunity, financial gain in a way I've never experienced with like, like, just like effortless, no hustle. It's I love what I'm doing and money comes. So I don't know if crystals work, but I highly recommend everybody buy some citrine and bring the abundance into your life. Uh, that I think everything's intention. So, um, I've philosophized stones in a few ways. One, the <laughs> technological part of me has thought about all the metals and that if um, we're going down to nanotechnology, then aren't these crystals just in fact storing some kind of information? And then they're a color and a concentration of color based on the information that they're storing. And if we're all working in this quantum record way, couldn't there be information that's in that stone that you as an enlightened being could hold it and then download it? Absolutely. And I love that you're bringing the philosopher's stone up because you did get that philosopher's stone in a past life. We talked about that. And it's just like, I'm seeing you almost actually like, I just had this vision in my head of you pulling a big sword out, like just a big sword. Is that like the philosopher's stone you pull? No, and that's the sword, sword and the stone. Sword of stone, whatever that is. I just saw something about that. And, uh, but yeah, I do crystals. You can channel a crystal. You can hold a crystal in your hand and speak to it and ask it what knowledge it has. They do everything holds memory, right? And energy. And those crystals existed and experienced stuff. And ev I believe everything has a soul. I do. I feel like you could tap into the energy. So your, um, what would be a name I would call you? Are you a channeler? Um, I guess you could call me that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Are you yeah. a conduit? Um, and in between, I, yeah, I guess so. I, I, um, accidental psychic is, I guess what's <laughs> coming to mind, to be honest, like T tell, um, my audience some of I, I like to call them superpowers because I think we're all just like walking um heroes just waiting it's like we were all born with these innate abilities and then society spent all these years to brainwash them away from us <laughs> or make us feel crazy for them and now we're here so what are your superpowers 
my superpowers well my psychic abilities are all fully online all of them like clairsentience clairvoyance i can taste things hear things all of them i feel things um a lot of people like have like a concentration of one or another and i just um all of mine are online and they can they came on like this fall 2020 and i'm actually releasing on my podcast let's be friends uh psychic abilities series i have part one and part two out which is just like um it's a conversation with a medium I had been, I was speaking to as I woke up and she was channeling my psychic abilities, giving me a heads up. Basically, I'm like laughing because I look back and I know what she was doing. She's giving me a heads up of what was happening because I had been misdiagnosed bipolar and beyond for 10 years and beyond that took all sorts of other pills for depression and basically these pharmaceuticals I never needed that I believe really are meant to numb our mind and disconnect us from ourselves and numb our psychic abilities. Because people who have mood disorders, I feel are often just super sensitive and they're just feeling a lot. Like I, one of my psychic abilities or superpowers is when I'm channeling or tapping into somebody or I, I often feel how they feel when they describe it, which can be heavy. Mm -hmm. If they're talking about trauma, I can suddenly start crying with them. and. And the gift is, is that I truly see them and I truly feel what they're experiencing. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's super, it's super heavy. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, my super, my superpowers, I'm very, very telepathic. I receive a lot of, I channel um, my, I only channel for love and of uh -huh. the highest light. It's just this firm boundary that I have. Um, but I work with the Galactic Federation. I feel I am of the Orion Council of the Light. I have, I have the capability. Okay. I'm going to break it yeah. down as it goes. What yeah. is the galactic federation? The galactic federation is the, um, six dimensional light beings that are from other places in the galaxy, because we aren't just from planet earth. There's more that exists outside of this. And these energies, these, cause a lot of them are like 10th dimensional beings, like the Pleiadians or like we're in the you know third dimension, fourth dimension coming into the fifth. So we're in physical form, but these, um, beings that I I've also seen, um, with my own eyes open, like I've seen a Lyran, for an example, which is the, from the star beings from Vega and, and the Lyran Council of the Light is of the Galactic Federation, the Orion Council of the Light, the police. There's this basically this uh, light beings that have come together that are, are essentially our ancestors or what we come from. We're stardust, we're the star seeds, and they're here to help humanity in this awakening. How long have they, when was the first time they visit? Okay. You've had your awakening of recent, mm -hmm. but now that you've had your awakening, do you recall any times when you were younger that you feel like you were visited? Um, one time when I, I I'm positive, um, and it was I was seven years old, and I was I lived grew up in Midland, Michigan, in um, the middle of Michigan, headquart world headquarters of Dow Chemical Plant, ironically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, super crooked. Anyways, um, and I'm walking down the street. Is that the and, company that makes mace? Uh, probably, probably. They make like all sorts of chemicals and cleaners and work with just all chemicals. There was that movie called One Crazy Summer with Demi Moore and John Cusack. And there's a scene in it where um, she's about to like, I think they're about to beat up him. And <laughs> she's like, I know Dow. And they're like, really? What's Dow <laughs> karate? And she's like, no, it's the company that makes mace. And she sprays. Them oh, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a Dow thing. For sure. I went to Sorry. Dow High. Like they've infiltrated oh. the city. You, Everybody works for It's weird. And um, what's your mascot of Dow High? Oh, God. It's the Doughboy because we're all super rich at that school. No. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> the kids drove nicer cars than the teachers. And then the other high school had, like, I don't know, some cool, like, char well, we're supposed to be the Chargers, but they, the Pillsbury Doughboy is literally the, the mascot that they uh, use. Like the Stave Puff mar Marshmallow. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I interrupted. Oh, so, yeah. No, it's cool. <laughs> so actually, I, I was, I was, I was, I was seven years old. I was um, riding my bike, not walking. And it's at night and I was, probably like eight or something, eight o'clock. I don't know what time it, it was dark. And I remember just seeing something out of the left side of my eye that I thought was one of those electric boxes, mm -hmm. you know, on the ground, the but it wasn't, it was just, it, it's like, I just remember like, like one time I was on a trail and I saw a coyote and it took my brain a second to place it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it was kind of, oh, what is that? It's not a dog. It's not a, oh, I've never seen one before. It's a, a coyote. Well, it was like that. I saw something machine kind of like, and, and I 
just always felt at that moment that I, that it was an inter an alien. I would have said at that time, that's what I felt I saw. And by as quick as I saw it, it went away. And I told myself it was the electric box. I was like, you didn't see anything, Kara. I convinced my seven-year-old self that what I had seen, and I don't even really know what it was, honestly, except for I'm hearing like a shapeshifter. I don't know if it wasn't like the Galactic Federation, but it was something. And it always stood out to me. And that's like really super minor considering what I've seen now and like such absolute like certainty and know who and what it is. But I, I do remember that when I was seven. And then... um then you fast forward i'm 38 this summer in june like i had seen so all the time in between all the way up until 38 you're just kind of like a normal person oh, well, on, your, on your hamster wheel i thought so well yeah yeah i worked in the matrix i went to grad school i did all those things um you know i i i yeah i i played the game i became totally asleep totally totally asleep totally asleep bless my heart i call that old Kara. but anyways um, ooh, I just reflected on that for a second. Anybody who didn't see, I stared off to the left for a moment and then bounced right back here. You can astral travel back in the <laughs> yeah, time you're just and memory. looking back at her. Yeah, you were healing yeah. her a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so this June was so in between, yeah, from like whatever, I started doing psychedelics when I was 19 and I had just wild out there experiences and started seeing all these Hindi gods like Ganesh and Buddha and Kali and just green terror and all didn't know what it was figured everybody else was seeing this. Like I'd be staring at a friend's face on my, and I'd be tripping and I'd look and her face would turn into Ganesh. And then like 10 eyeballs would like float around. And then I saw like a hundred eyeballs pop out and I was like, man, psychedelics are dope. And I just thought everybody was seeing stuff like that. And then I started channeling and I didn't know what it was. It's blessed my heart. And looking back now, it's fucking wild. Like it would be like spirits just directly talking to me when I, and it was happening when I was on mushrooms. Um, and it was just like, I would just know and I would ask questions. I started asking questions because I've always wanted to know questions about life and spirit would answer. And I just thought it was like the mushrooms talking to me or I don't know. And everybody was experienced this. But then I started talking about it. I started learning other people didn't have this, like weren't seeing things and like connecting like that. And I, and I, but then in June, 2020, what happened is I had this, I write about this in my chat, my book, it's called my baptism, where in this trip, I'm just going to say the part that's relevant. I met the Orion council of the light mm -hmm. visually around me. I could see these 12 beings and, um, they, I just, they, that was them being like, good. You woke up. We've been, we've been when really you put trying. your finger yeah. in a circle like that, I could see them sitting around you. You're so, I, I felt like you. I felt like your whole face got brighter when you, you said are. it too. Oh. Look, I'm like I felt like your camera just got brighter. You know what's <laughs> crazy is people have been telling me when they watch my podcast videos that they see me turn into a Lyran or like different things like that. I think the veil is really thinning, and we're because <laughs> we the thing is is it all exists already. What's inside of us, and I'm very mm -hmm. Lyran, so I'm not surprised that someone sees me turn into a cat. I, 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 I'm not surprised that you see the Orion Council of Light around me because I am of them. They are of me. I am connected like that to them. And they had to come to me, but I didn't realize it was them in June until later because this fall, one of my psychic abilities is that of possession. And that sounds scary. Like I know saying it, but what it means is an entity can jump into me and speak through me. Mm -hmm. I have to allow it. Mm -hmm. It's you can't just fuck it. I, I like to set my boundaries all the time. Um, I only allow the love around me and I've never had anything otherwise come through psychically and I would never allow it. And that's why, cause it's just a solid line. This is like a past life thing coming through a boundary where I think like, you know, that. but anyways, I'm in the my backyard and this, all of a sudden this energy jumps into me and I, I go, and when I'm channeling often, I'll talk out loud and I'm hearing it for the first time. Uh -huh. That's how it comes through me. me too. I, I, I relate to that. Yeah, it's cool. And, um, and I say, I go, I go to my friend in front of me and I say, you're looking at a member of the Orion Council of the Light in the flesh. It was really firm. It was almost like a man. I thought it was a man's energy speaking through me. And I look at her, I go, like I turn my head and I go, did I just say that? She's like, yeah, that just happened. And so that was a possession, a drop in. But that's like literally how part of how the Galactic Federation came to me. And like, I didn't even know what this was really. I learned what this was this fall. I basically, it's just, that's why I say accidental psychic. Cause this, I never tried to be psychic. I denied these gifts in myself by just not seeing them for so long. And it, 
honestly, it take I say it takes a psychic often to activate a psychic, and it, it took this medium Chantel coming into my life. Huh? I believe I. It, I find it super interesting. And even in my own experience of like probably September, October of 2020, I was all, always woke as far as did I know every conspiracy? Yes. Did I know most of the symbology? Yes. Even the conspiracies now I'm like, are those lies? I don't even know what we're allowed to find anymore. But my <laughs> spiritual awakening was definitely all at the end of 2020. Just even till now, I feel like, um, the amount I'm ready for, um, it almost terrif it, it's not terrifying. It's just n almost nerve wracking because I know the work that I've done and, uh, the shadow work to get here. And it's like going forward is like, okay, I guess I'm ready for the next part. But every time yep. you peel off one of these layers and you're authentic and, um, vulnerable about it, I feel like it, the the connection uh hearing your own the divine connection oh it, it becomes uh louder in your head and it becomes quicker and certain people certain other connections that's why i think it's funny that you're like a psychic brings out a psychic some people um that you connect to are just like that magnet that you connect and you're like drawn together and other people you can feel like you like, and i yeah i can feel like like I can feel connected <laughs> to you. Like we could probably talk about anything or I feel like uh -huh. if I um, even like I feel like I could channel you and I don't know if I'm somebody who channels like I sometimes you can try I, if you want. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. I feel like sometimes feel I'm a conduit more than I you are super psychic. The fact that you just saw the Orion Council when I was talking about that. It's just that's beautiful. It was weird how you did your finger like that. And I almost saw like lit up heads like I, a picture. Um, but mm -hmm. I, and it was definitely their faces that I saw the most detail of. Very golden. Yeah. Like bonfire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I just, it sounds so crazy going through all of this, especially for me. I grew up pretty religious. So it just, it sounds ludicrous to people, but so many people out there are going through the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely. That's why I'm putting the psychic abilities series out on my podcast because I, I, it's very activating because like the first one was really about like my clairvoyance opening up or like the second one was about my clairsentience opening up and you hear there's activation. What's clairvoyance? Clairvoyance is what you see. Mm -hmm. Their vision. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yep. Clairvoyance is like seeing and being able, like, I have my hands or anybody can't see in front of my face, in front of my eyes in that area. Cause that's very much where I see, mm. you know, there's like my, there's like a huge screen. Nobody can see that. I love that. Nobody can see what you see. Nobody knows your thoughts. I have always felt so safe in that. You know what I mean? Like that private little space, but that's your little screen and nobody can, can see that, but you. Yeah, that's pretty. And I, I thought I was, is it clear audience where you hear things no one can hear? Yeah, clear audience, and um, I believe so. And um, I call it voice of spirit, also. Um, but yeah, 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 definitely. And and um, like when I do channeling sessions with people, it's super amazing and powerful. And I know it activates a lot of people because everybody has their gifts. Everybody has gifts. We all have different gifts, but we all have gifts. And because I know that's part of what I'm supposed to be doing when I do these channeling sessions is to help activate people. But the thing is, is it's like you can only like do a couple of those a day. It's intense and I can only reach so many people. So I wanted to get this information on my podcast just because I really want all of us to step into our gifts. That's going to help this whole world, you know, and like for us all to see how powerful we are. And I truly think it's the biggest like conspiracy or matrix thing that they're hiding us from ourselves. We yeah. are the disclosure. We hold the wisdom. We all already have it within us. It's just about seeing it and believing it and giving the key to ourselves. I agree. I think um, we're the supercomputer. And so they keep trying to convince us that this other supercomputer and blah, 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 blah. But it can't even see that good. It needs you to do CAPTCHAs. It needs you to tell you what like <laughs> a stop sign <laughs> is. It needs you to like what where you walk across the street. Like tell us where the you walkway wipe is. wipe its butt and stuff. Yeah, yeah I just like... don't even believe in that. I think we're the supercomputer. We just every single thing that the phone can do, we used to be able to do, but we forgot how. I used to be able to remember every number in the world right inside my brain mm. now I don't even know my own I used to know directions to anywhere in this country anywhere I wanted to go I could just make it there now I can't even make it to a friend's house without turning wow. left when the phone tells me when to turn 
I, yeah, I believe we could talk to each other without it. I think we can relay information without it. I think every single thing the iPhone can do is our superpowers. It's Mm -hmm. trying to convince us that we need it instead of turning it off. That's what I almost wonder if like, if the world went without internet for 10 days, would we just see psychic abilities like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. And it, it, it could be dormant. And, and that's the whole thing. If you don't believe you can do something, well, you fucking can't do it then because you don't believe you can do it. And you're creating your think about that. You, you know what I mean? Like, you oh, I can't do that. I'm too short or no, I couldn't be psychic. I'm not. I've been told I'm not special. OK, well, that's your reality. So you want to be psychic? You want to reach that? You want to try that? See yourself doing it. Believe in yourself and give yourself the opportunity to try. And not be fearful of what, you know, like you're saying, I think it's super important once you recognize anything. If you think there's an evil spirit around me, there's a dense energy. Once you recognize it, it's there. And now you have to protect yourself from it. And so you're, you're going to have to start doing the work. So mm-hmm. it's like these things like psychic. I don't feel like I asked for it. I feel like it just kind of right when I said that the thunder rolled. In. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I asked for it. I feel like it was just kind of there one day and I couldn't avoid it and yes I had to I don't know why I even feel weird about it It was almost like the sleepless um me uh had to contact people (laughs) and like like hey let me tell you a bunch of really awkward stuff that I shouldn't really (laughs) know about your past and let's start a friendship (laughs) dude it's like I'll be I was like when it first started really turning on this fall like I would just get messages in my head and I'd be like with a friend and I'd be like, I got to say, it. stop, wait, hold on guys. Wait, I have to say this. This has come through three times and this is for you. And then I had to give a message. It was like, all these guys were like, Oh my gosh, my gosh, let me come through. Let me come through. And it got like to the point where it was even overwhelming, where I just had to say like, please like back off. Like it's just like, you know what I mean? Like when it first turns on, you have to learn to like, I don't know. It's like your antenna just comes on and like everything is just like, but you got to like, get in there and like set your boundaries and like fo- be able to focus but yeah, are you a like, drinker no I don't drink anymore I don't uh really drink that much I I do drink occasionally I don't really drink that much either but I do find um I almost feel like spirit sometimes wants to play with me mm-hmm. and it <laughs> entices me to drink because I'm less likely to um Whatever my I don't want to play is, whatever my energetic yeah. of shielding myself from that energy isn't there when I'm drinking. And mm-hmm. it is so much easier to come in. And I it almost it makes me so aware of, wow, when people are really drinking, what entities are they allowing in? Because I can feel when spirit wants to play with me with it. So. Yeah, no, I love what you're saying. This is powerful. And this is a, a powerful and I don't judge drinking or anything. Um, I like the 10 years that I just had on all those psych meds, I just couldn't drink. Like you drink like one glass, glass of wine being on lithium and you're throwing up like, so that just kind of happened. And then once I woke up, I just lost all desire to drink. Cause I was like, Oh, it's a poison. That's it. I even like my biggest like Instagram post I've ever done. Like was this tweet that I said that was like, alcohol is legal because they want us stupid and sick. And then psychedelics are illegal because they don't want us to remember how powerful we are or the truth. And it went like crazy. Like people loved it and shared it all around. I was like, that's right. Like, what the fuck? Why is alcohol legal? Why? I have to question everything now that the the matrix or the society does want for us. Like that makes no sense. I binge drank my way through my fucking twenties and did things I never should have done and yeah. probably had sex with somebody's demon that they allowed in. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought you were like... going to say somebody's dad. <laughs> oh no! God's demon. <laughs> I probably had sex with someone's dad. <laughs> well, probably somebody's probably that dad. Too. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but you do, I don't know. Like, yeah. Like, so, so I just naturally, when I woke up this fall, it wasn't, I actually love how it happened because I just have no desire and it's okay. Like I, I, and it's just for me and um, yeah, like I've seen in friends eyes since I've woken up and I've got these, you know, superhero skills. I can see in their eyes when an entity's jumped in and is in control of them. You me can see too. It. The more, um, the more clean I get and the more uh, being present in 
each moment and in my own power, it is so obvious to see when they're gone. I can feel when even uh, when they're 75 percent there and I don't like it as much. And yes. um, Lindsay, I don't know if you ever listen to Rogue Ways, but um, it's a great podcast. And you actually you guys would hit it off and like really enjoy each other. But she taught me that alchemically alcohol actually separates um flesh soul from flesh like that's what it actually does if you pour alcohol on to like a leaf you can watch it tear away all the oh. flesh of it so that's what it's doing it's peeling oh spirit yeah you us. said it you said that it and you were just describing it on yourself you said it takes away that thing that mm -hmm. layer kind of a protect well that's that flesh thing yeah that it, yeah you can feel it peel away so it's yeah. just like interesting alchemically yeah. that alcohol that is a solvent yeah. that does that yes it is interesting i love how your mind works too you're such a good investigator and i love that about your instagram you're i love what you post and you're like you're a badass about things oh thank I you really, yeah 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 well, who is god to you right now uh, I, I, I feel like I'm the God of my life. I'm the creator of my life. Um, I'm a reflection of my creator of my God. We are one. We are all one. So my God is found within right now. Is the galactic star sea or the galactic federation and the Lyrans and the Lemurians and the Tatarians and the Atlanteans, do we all come from the same source? I think so. I mean, if I'm looking from within me i think everything start like if i go like if i if i'm like zoom like zooming in asking and i have like had, i remember being on mushrooms and having the opportunity to look at source and it for me it was a big light and i so many people have said the same thing like that the closest they ever felt to whatever source says and i'm just using source as a placement word for whatever everybody thinks it's gotta be something that starts this right I just see this light. And so it's like that light could be the had created the Lyrans, had created the Galactic Confederation. And like for me, it's like everything was a thought. And once that, that's why, like you were talking about us being the supercomputers, it's like our, maybe it's our thoughts that are the supercomputers. And there's so much energy and intention, like you were saying earlier, behind them. And that's really what's weaving this world. How many lifetimes do you think you've lived? Oh, fuck. Thousands. <laughs> Thousands? I yeah. No, dude, I'm an old, old lady. Is this your last time on Earth? Yeah, it is. It's a couple of people's last time on Earth that I've talked about. I don't it's know why. You, old soul. Is it your last time? I don't think so. I don't want it to be. You don't I want have, it to be. I have a, you see, you get the choice. You're I have a real um, strong love for Earth in a way that people are like, what if the firmament unzips and a UFO comes down and there's med beds and we're all going up? I'm like, I'm not going. I won't oh. get it. <laughs> I'm like, Love I won't you. even trust a vaccine from this government. You think I'm getting on a UFO ship? <laughs> I'm not getting on a UFO either. I'm going to leave this place correctly. <laughs> I learned to fly. No, That's my I, only yeah. way out of here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Either my dragon yeah. picks me up or I sprout wings. <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> That's... I want your dragon to pick you up. I love that. That's so cute. That is my real. Can we play in this timeline where yeah. um, in in this Agartha underground tunnels that they're all talking about digging up that are filled with whatever atrocities that people want to talk about? Can there also be dragons in those tunnels? <laughs> yes, there can. There can be lots of dragons. There. Yes. I, I, I see. keep seeing. I'm seeing like a gray dragon with red. Green, red. Ooh, gray yeah. one like an african gray Ooh, yeah <laughs> gray is my witch color oh really mm -hmm. well then the, then me imagining you talking about your dragon being gray is perfect yeah like gray with an e I, I i think um everybody wants to be love and light but i'm just very getting very comfortable owning my like black ooze and fire sometimes too because I it's, yeah it still comes from a place of love it's just sometimes righteous anger yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I'm at this place now where I don't really, I'm not going to be saying evil and good anymore, or even heaven and hell. Like, I don't believe in any of that. It just, I'm, I'm at this place where I'm like the neutral observer of things. And I just want to be able to see things from that place rather than emotionally attaching to everything. And like, I had this big, like, um, meditation that I did this on five, five, where I really felt like I, saw a lot of darkness come to me kind of psychically and I don't like I say I don't allow anything that's not for my highest good or for the highest love of light and what I did was I was told by my guides to not get afraid like this was just like a training for me almost like 
when you see the these things that should scare you, whatever anybody wants to think of something that scares them right now, like now transmute it, watch it dance, add rainbow color to it, put some fucking fun music on, pass a joint to your worst enemy. Like all of a sudden it was like my mind felt different and I was like, I'm not afraid of that darkness anymore. Like there is nothing to fear, but fear itself. I love that. I actually think that is the key of we, we hear people um, saying holding space. We hear people saying holding the line. We the key to me of us as a collective surviving the biggest psychological operation of all time has been this energetic. We don't know what it is. We don't know what the authenticity is. Why I'm like, hey, Kara, I just wanted to see if you're OK today. I know this sounds weird because we don't really know each other, but I just saw this number and it made me think of you. And you're writing someone and you're like, hey, I you know, saw an octopus and it made me think of you. I don't know why. Those little authenticity that we're all riding on, those authentic things, that is what we're connected on. And that's how we're keeping alive right now. That's how we're, we're not getting into depression. That's why I know what people aren't. I mean, not that people aren't killing themselves. That's I think probably worse than any virus will be the depression and the stuff that comes off after. But I energetically think we're all in this new place where we are vulnerable and we're sharing these things and we're um, like we're rising together. We will all rise as one. And um, it's not a woke or um, a spiritual thing or any it's like a humbling. We all have to yes. be a little humble because it can't be a, I told you, I told you this is what was happening. It's almost like every single power that you've got given and every single person that's called you crazy for it that you're like, oh, I can't wait till they just realize I'm not crazy. Once that leaves you and you're like, I don't care what they think anymore. There's nothing to fear of. I don't care what they think. It's like they, I think a huge part of spiritual awakening is I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It's like, it should be like number six. You're almost there when you hit the, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Cause there's no more fear. When, when you're free of what people think of you, that yeah. fear, once that leaves you, yep. now you're an aperture of God. Now you become the way we expand as a whole because nobody can be your authentic authentic self no one can do that so if you're doing that and you're vulnerable and you're fucking real we all expand together we all keep growing so yeah i like the it seems so simple nothing to fear but fear itself but it's everything yeah no i love that well said that was powerful i loved what you just said so much um yeah once you don't give a fuck like and you're, you're they can't get you that's the thing. It's like the little things that used to trigger you. You're like, uh, -uh I'm power. I'm going to keep my power to myself and I'm not going to waste my energy on that conversation or I'm not going to go down that dead end path again. Like I'm changed. I evolved. I decided to level the fuck up. You come up there where you're floating and you're doing, you grew your wings or your dragon came and picked you up and you're flying around having fun instead of fighting the old dang stupid patterns that didn't serve you. You know, do you walk in your full magic now? Um, I definitely slip up time to time. Is that you? What do you mean? Well, exactly? I, um, when you're out and about on the street or, Oh, okay. Like I'm that person that if like, if I've got a, I'm buying papers, like, and like I go to the crystal store and I'm buying stuff and I'm cashing out and I'm talking to the guy behind the counter and I, I get a message I'm going to, from his guides, I'm going to say it, I'm going to share it. Like, I'm, I'm, I find myself channeling random stuff for strangers all the time. And like, I'm, I am just that person that's in, like, you end up in line that you just start spilling your heart out to or something. So if that means magic, I'm like that when I get out all the time. Yeah. Unless I'm in off mode. So I guess, no, I'm not on all the time because if I'm, I'm either very approachable or I'm a Scorpio moon and I'm like, leave me the fuck alone and don't talk to me, but I will still be nice because I'm a nice person. What's your whole, what's your, um, rising, Virgo rising, Virgo sun, Scorpio moon. Ah, okay. All right. The Scorpio moon. That's, um, I have a lot of Scorpio and moon friends. I've, Me too, because Scorpio moons like Scorpio moons because we get each other. I'm an Aries moon, but a Scorpion. I'm a Scorpio, Aries moon, or Libra rising. Oh, yeah. You t I love that Libra in you. I it's My sister's a Libra, and I always judged it in her my whole life, and then I'm like, huh. Like, it's why I always also understood everything she was saying. I'm like, like I didn't know. 
And that's what we do. We, ju- whatever we're judging outside of ourselves, like those people that were like, I told you so it's like anybody who's doing that, like that's, we're just a reflection of each other. So whatever we're projecting is actually for us to look at. And so like you giving your sister a hard time for you being a Le- or a Libra, was it a Libra? Right. Yeah. And you, but actually you were discovering that you had that in you. Maybe that was you giving her time because it was, you wanted that for yourself or like you felt that in yourself and you, but you actually did have it. Did you not know you had the Libra in you at the time? No, I, you know, I, I, it's like when I first, the whole part of the awakening, it's like, I just was a Scorpio. That's yeah. all I knew about myself. And then that, somebody does your whole star chart and you're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Like, you're right. I had that no idea. is a piece of the awakening. Yeah. I love how crystals are a piece of the awakening mm-hmm. that I don't give a fuck. The having your full natal chart read mm-hmm. and getting into astrology um yeah I think there's there's really yeah psychedelics I um definitely think everybody should try them I don't think every drug they call a psychedelic is actually you know I mean meth you could do that long enough and get a psychedelic property on it not great you can eat enough marijuana and that becomes psychedelic and that is not the same I think you should do mushrooms I know that there's people that are heavy into LSD I can't get heavy into something that all of MK Ultra was built around. I've so never tried it in it's, this lifetime. It's never, never wanted to. It's bizarro to me that, yeah. I mean, the entire, it, the LSD was created the same as the TV. It was only there for yep. brainwashing. Yeah. That's the I never, only reason. I always, I always had a feeling to never try it, to never do it. And I'm so firm in that intuition inside me. I never did. And I've done mushrooms plenty of times. I've never um, done like MDMA or any pills besides the ones I took for my psych meds. So there was like an apprehension for me and synthetic drugs. Definitely. The, I'd rather sacred medicines for me is like they come from the earth. Yeah, I, I agree with I, I would like to do an ayahuasca ceremony at some point. Um, I think I'd be interested in doing like the sweat lodge or even the ones where they take you like to the top of a mountain for like three days and you kind of. Maybe to Ooh, get dehydrated. Cool. I've I've done sweat lo- I did sweat lodges like ten years ago. It's crazy. I found someone in Austin. I don't even remember how and um who was doing sweat lodges like in just like the normal neighborhood in like near downtown and uh they were just amazing. Like it was a it was like this group we would chant together and you get in there and it's so hot and there's all this sage and you're just covering yourself. I think we like covered ourselves in like leaves or something mm. like that. These big leaves and. It's fucking intense and I just love doing it. But that was me. I can see now tapping into past life stuff because I, I totally get it. But like, it's crazy that I just ended up at those sweat lodges. Now that I'm thinking about it, I, I went probably like seven times, kind of got into that and then did ayahuasca a decade later, last, last September. And that was profound. Oh, wow. What was that like? Oh, my gosh. It was absolutely life changing. I mean, after I probably took in the decade. So your awakening was June and then September you did the ayahuasca. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah yep. That's yep. pretty similar. I felt like my awakening was like September and then October and then on 12, 20, I did DMT. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. So it was like right, <laughs> right afterward. It was like, yeah. okay, I'm yeah. going crazy. Let's just uh, let load just up the that. car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did DMT like four years ago. That's a that's life changing too in a totally different way. That's like not for the faint at heart, but you can't control a DMT trip. Everybody gets the trip that they're supposed to have. It's an absolutely uniquely cultivated trip. You can't. For, that's one thing I don't think people, some people have a hard time with is they want to blast off every time or go there, but like it's, it's a very much a drug that will just give you the perfect experience for that, that moment. But ayahuasca mm-hmm. is not like D I mean, they do often give you DMT and put it in the ayahuasca, um, that can be mixed in, but ayahuasca to me is more of like a healing. Um, it's a bark that you drink and it's like, a comes from a vine, I believe. And it vines into your body. I wrote a beautiful chapter in my book called grandmother ayahuasca. Um, cause they call ayahuasca grandmother grandfather is uh peyote. Oh, very okay. similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. They're masculine. So grand, so ayahuasca has a feminine energy and it's for healing and releasing trauma. And I believe you can release lifetimes of such trauma. You can release a decade of trauma. Like the worst addictions can be cured from this because, and you can be cleaned and you're purging and it's not fun. Like I really wrote about this in my book to great way to explain. Um, and it's just like, it was like, um, it was like being reborn. <laughs> like your body goes through something and the cleansing I had just, you know, had took 10 years of 
30,000 pills I never needed. So imagine all this. And I had gained, and I think all this, the feeling that I didn't do, um, I feel it accumulated in mass in my body because I gained about 85 pounds that 10 years. Wow. And I lost all that weight last year, but I still think there's a lot of stuck energy. So you purge out I energy. You feel it. You hear it. Yeah. You hear the demonic sounds yes. coming out of people. It's wild. It, and it, then it still integrates with you like the next month or so it stays with you. She's with you. And if you're with my psychic abilities opening up, like I could, I was with grandmother. Like I, she was with me showing me what she did. She walked me into the rabbit hole essentially. Cause I started waking up to everything over the summer. I woke up to, I wake up, woke up spiritually first and then woke up to the matrix. Mm. I kind of came backwards. And so it was, um, I learned about MK ultra from somebody that I did ayahuasca with like a couple days after the ceremony, I was like, follow to talk to them. And I don't even know how, I don't know how or why I should look back, but he sent me an article, a Wikipedia on MK ultra. Hmm. And that was it. I just went, whoosh, and all of a sudden I probably I think I, yeah, I got the great awakening map. Another um, thing Lindsay from Rogueways told me about was that we think of time going in one direction, but time comes in the opposite direction too. And sometimes people, certain souls, um, and she was talking about her with her partner, Johnny. Um, she thinks he's from the future. And so they're like coming and they're giving each other information on their route back in the other direction. Oh, I love that. Isn't this the I craziest chills, I get idea? Chills. And I so think that I'm getting a big yes on that. And so when but you were me, saying yeah. like your spiritual, like, like mine happened with all of my logic first and yours happened all in your heart first. Yeah. I wonder if we were coming at different directions in time. Uh, so oh, like woo. I had all this technology or whatever <laughs> and I was coming from one and you had all this spirituality and you were coming from the other stuff. way yeah I really actually feel most of my I I actually like I've tapped into people's future lives before a couple times and I was surprised I asked the guy my guides I'm like I didn't realize you could tap into future lives I'm like well they're like what time's not real so any, you know what I mean it's all happening now it's just what you're tapping into but when I tap into my own past lives it's all like ancient stuff old time I'm really I mostly see like super old times so you and I you just said you came from the future with all this technology so you would have been coming from one way and I would have been coming the other and here we are meeting right now sharing our wisdom and so if the time isn't linear and you're going in one direction and I'm going in the other and we're all doing this soul trauma healing for our ancestors, then think we are all fixing it. And the, like the singularity of it all by all coming at, in every direction of time and meeting yeah. right now. Coming together yes. as one because it should have been one, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's um, profound. it's pretty uh, even, um, I know I can't, I feel like I'm just. Dr. Courtney Hunt, she her singularity thought of everything being if we're all going to a black hole, if everything in the universe is going toward a black hole, which this is how it is, it's happening this way. So we'd all be being pushed to a singularity from some point, all the planets, all the people, all the ideas, all the energy, it would be all getting pushed to a singularity. Interesting. I don't think about black holes much or black hole theories. I don't me know. I don't either. Know. Every yeah. time if somebody says uh, it to me, I'm my, like, it's not in my timeline though. That's why <laughs> me. I'm always like me either. There's I'm a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff people tell me about and I love hearing it. And I'm like, Oh wow. Well, that's just not in my timeline. So yeah, that's just, I, and I'm so solid. Like I, I know I work in the astral realms on maintaining for humanity with other people. Um, I'm just hearing in my head. I think you could very likely be part of this. Well, we're working on timelines to keep humanity on the optimal timeline reality. And uh, in that, that timeline, that optimal timeline reality, that we don't suck into a black hole and disappear. I don't feel that either. The second you add, like when I hear it, my head automatically is like, what if we're in the black hole now? What if we're on the other side of the black hole? What if now we're going out to expansion? We already went through singularity. Now we're in the opposite of singularity. Like I automatically start to, that's it, kind of the, one of the hard things is it's like once something resonates true, I'm like, oh, that's just true. I don't know why it's true. I don't need to look up anything further. It's just true. Yeah. Um, but when it isn't, I have to keep looking and looking and, and looking. And you know, when you asked me what God was to me and I said it was within mm -hmm. that assurance that you feel within and that kind of moment, that's God to me, you know, and that's like, oh no, no, I feel in myself. I feel this answer from within. But when I look outside of myself and someone's telling me something or I'm looking for validation or information or facts that feels like, 
Ooh, that doesn't feel like I'm creating that. Like, I'm not so sure about that. You get what I'm saying? Like when you can feel like, I can't even feel it right now. Like you can feel within that energy within that that feels right. Or that's mm -hmm. my answer. That's my timeline. And then you can kind of, you can always feel when an answer or an information is coming from without outside of you. And I think that right now we're all to really go within and really like when it comes, there's a lot of fuckery out there about everything like in this world. And it's sometimes I remember when I woke up, I was like, I don't know what to believe is true anymore. Like I was like, I, I, I don't know. Like this is just seems like everything's backwards. And I didn't know, like, who do I turn to for information? There's false light left and right. There's people who have their egos or people who have done their shadow work and they're projecting that. And I just, just it's all over the place. Bless this world's heart. I think that this awakening is just kind of beginning. And, yeah. you know, like, but uh, you got to go within. The truth is I found so within. Mm -hmm. I also one of the kind of downloads I had was human beings don't need artificial light. We see perfectly fine in the dark and we've tr just like the phone has taught us how to not retain numbers. Light has taught us mm. to not only not be able to see in the dark anymore, uh, fear the dark. And it used to be very normal without all of this artificial light around. We could all be outside for a very short amount of time and see crystal clear in that dark. We could walk through a woods without the moon because our eyes would adjust to it. Um, there's even like uh, pirates wear a patch on one eye. They aren't because they're missing an eye. It's because one of the eyes is always ready to go below deck and the other is always ready to see in sunlight. So they just change the patch to their other eye if they walk below deck. So it's like these things that we've learned about just our vision and our visual sphere or what this is science to me is what is put in place to make sure humans have limitations in my opinion. So everything like about yeah, science that makes sense. Yeah, is and just believe this. And I'm yeah. famous. I came up with this. Think of all the, it's just, no, it's no, this no, no, is no, gravity. No. And this yeah. is a planet. And this is how, this is how far away your sun is. And this is why an eclipse happens. Yeah. And this, <laughs> this is, is how far away your sun is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, how do you know that really? Well, we sent yeah. a, uh, and, and everything they tell you, it's like they sent some satellite out when we were born, you and me, before right. we were born, they sent right. a satellite out that sends back a pattern of numbers and that's how we get a picture of the moon of Saturn. Look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that doesn't make sense to me. I can't get down with whatever you're doing over there and that we're just, no. we're all convinced blanketly no. that you know the answers of the universe. Yeah, no, I'm glad you bring astrology up because I've been thinking a lot about the moon and astrology because astrology is one of those things that really blew my mind when I woke up because I never believed in it before. But then I started, you know, looking like you, I was more than a Virgo. I was a Virgo, Virgo, Scorpio. And then I read my birthday book page and my mind was blown again. But my thought was, am I just like a template? Like, did this just is like literally the birthday book is like you put every day of the year you read the day you were born and it describes you in like two full pages. It's amazing. But then I started thinking like, you know, we feel like templates. I don't know this whole deep thought. But then I started thinking about astrology and the moon and what if the moon was placed and what if there's something like it's set up like a simulation here because I learned about firmament and my mind just loves going all over the place and just ex exercising ideas and I just started thinking like what about these full moon new moon rituals like why are we manifesting on the new moon when there's no energy reflecting off from the sun nothing coming to amplify it and we're letting go on the full moon when the sun is reflecting off the moon, it seems backwards to me. And then I started thinking about how each moon is associated with a sign, which each sign is associated with like cancers for feelings. So if it's a cancer moon, you're going to let go of feelings. But if it's a cap, if it's a Taurus moon, well, let's all do stuff for money. And then each moon's like a blood moon. Or da -da. So my point is, is each moon has a very specific intention for the collective using the same thing to manifest from what if where accidentally our power of manifestation could be you being used by somebody else for something else. Is this, is this making sense? This makes total sense. In fact, I, I never do this, but on IG, I did a post today and I'm going to read it real quick because it says these people are magicians. They know that human consciousness co-creates reality based on what the mind believes to be true and real. This process is amplified when instilled in the crowd of consciousness. They are projecting what they want into your mind so you build it for them. Um, boom, singer. That was mind-blowing. 
you, we just said this. That's the same thing. Exactly what I'm saying. Yes. yes. It's like yes. they, we are the creators. We're the creatures creating. I actually just stole that from human vibrations earlier. Cause I was like, <laughs> uh, she's so good at like Larry Gatoring so words good down. With words, yeah. And um, so creatures creating, that's what we are. And so we're creating creatures. Like that's, we manifest our own reality. We create our own existence in front of us. Lizards, cold blooded, whatever these archon low vibrational things are that have been running this things. realm, they things. can't create. They can't create no. life in their wombs. They no. can't create a beautiful movie script. They can't create a song. They can only no. regurgitate what we create. And that's why they need to put everything in front of us on these black mirrors, on the TVs, on their shows, on Netflix, on HBO. They need to put all that on there so we can create the doomsday ourselves. They can't create it. We have to. So that's yeah. where I'm so with you. Like if you realize you are a God and you are creating your own reality, you, can, you can't let them convince you that the end is nigh, doomsday, World War III, look at um, Joe Biden's your president. No, you can't believe that. <laughs> like we create, not on my timeline anyway. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I was pretty surprised. Like I, I just, I, you know, waking up this fall, I didn't really know about Q or any of that very much at all. So I just kind of thought, you know, once I realized that when I learned that Donald Trump had actually arrested more pedophiles and sex trafficking rings than any other president we'd ever had. And then I learned that, that, that Biden was most likely a pedophile. And I kind of <laughs> saw that from, you know, the videos of him making kids uncomfortable on the mainstream news. So I don't know why anybody can't see that. Anyways, so I just was like, yeah, I want Trump. To what win a perfect now. thing I'm for a woman to say, like, yeah. seriously, just all of us with this n n yeah. mom gene. We don't need any other proof than that. Yeah. As women watching yeah. a child, we've all been that yep. little girl and yep. we're all watching that little girl as a grown woman. Now, that yep. little girl didn't want to be touched like that anymore. And we all allowed it to happen. Yep. Yep. Wow, I could quick cry right now. Yeah. Me too. It really, yeah. it's the amount of time right. as a fucking little girl that you're forced to have to hug somebody or forced oh, to have to. Far. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know, and you're young, so you're tapped in still. You're sensitive, you're psychic still. You know who has bad vibes. Kids don't lie. And people do it like, well, just hug my boss. Just hug my, just hug your uncle. Just hug the, your prince, whatever this person is of high, high power over you, this control, this label. And we're all forced to like hug these people. And I will say I could be totally wrong. Don't want to do it. Whatever. It's always men that as a yes. little girl you that know, were forced yes. to hug these grown men. Yes. What are these grown yes. men wanting to hug Santa us for? Claus. Yes. Santa Claus's lap. I can remember, I can almost feel like a hand on my shoulder or of a man. Just like a man would just like, they put their hand. It's just don't even touch. It's just, and it's, yeah, it's just. Ugh. It's a weird Disgusting. society that still, yeah. everybody assumes I'm a certain type of woman. Woman. I am just learning just now that if somebody steps on my foot, I don't fucking apologize. Yes, that's it's right. It's like, where are we that everybody assumes a girl like me must be just walking around with all my manliness. No, I'm still a girl and I still get treated with that same kind of like, hi, I'm speaking in a meeting. Excuse me. Can I? Sorry. Um, ex I'll just stop talking because I have my little meek lady ways and who cares about my opinion anyway? That, but that comes from that forcing a little girl to hug someone. And she, I don't want to do it. That yeah. all that trauma that we carry through our, yeah. the whole Me Too movement of it all is from yeah. making that little girl hug someone she didn't want to. Yep. A Joe Biden. Yes. A no yes. creep. And, you know, I didn't think he was going to win, which I still don't think he did. <laughs> but <laughs> it sounds like cheating, but, um, whatever. I saw the fake inauguration on YouTube. It's totally cut. And like, I was just talking to float universe about this this morning. Like, it's just, it's so obvious how that inauguration, like even as a photographer, when you look at the way the sun is in different parts, like it doesn't seem real. And there's this fake white house stuff and whatever, like, you know, it, it, but like, we're talking about like the timeline. And I think it's kind of like funny that I think of the reason that Joe Biden is in office or, you know, the supposed president is because that's just what that's what humanity needed, I guess, for their awakening. Because mm -hmm. that's just what I know I'm on the highest optimal timeline. And it's just like that's that's what was needed. And are we about to find out like 
yes, this isn't a correct thing, guys. It's not like, what is about to happen? I don't know. I've been waiting since I woke up for like this to just all collapse and like break. And I had the like, cause I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, this is really going on. Oh my God. Like, ah, like everybody has to know. And I just, now I'm like watching everybody like zombie around and I'm like, what the fuck guys, come on. I know it's, um, I, two reasons. One, it needed to happen because the Republican party needs to realize that they are just as corrupt Donald Trump destroyed them before he destroyed the Democrats. The de- Democrats were actually watching in their death rattle right now. This is them fighting with their last breath for everything they are. But the, the Republicans were destroyed in the last three years. Mitt Romney's no longer a factor. Mitch McConnell's no longer. All these creepy demons that have been running the show forever. The same creepy demons, whether they're Republican or Democrat, have been yes. the same. Whether yep. they're Bush or Obama yep. cronies, they're the same CIA demons. Yeah. So all those demons, all those clowns have always been running the show they that's why they all have to play ball with trump because he will get them all voted out he's called out all their illegal voting machines on all their fucking counties and the same dirty politicians um the nancy pelosi's and the liberal side and everything like that but i think egos for all the people that were trump supporters for the last five years and all that they had to totally have their own shadow work and sit in a place of, I tried to warn you guys for all these years and you guys didn't believe me and you still think Donald Trump's a bad guy and you still think I'm dumb and you still think all this. And they had to get to a place of, I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm still going to say my truth. I'm still going to have friends. I'm still going to resonate where I resonate. And this is what's going to happen. But everybody had to get to that place of humbleness so that in their own breaking. So when this all does come out, it isn't. And I told you so it's yeah, like, that would be that ego thing. Yes. And that's or a mirror. Yeah. So I, I honestly, think... the whole, and I love that you say they're both corrupt. I didn't end up voting. Cause when I woke up this fall, I, I was like the whole fucking thing's corrupt. I was like that whole, I was like, you get in that game. You got to play the game. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, so I, I was just like, I got, I think when you ascend and when you bring that fifth dimension vibration in, which it, you just, you don't want to take part in these things that don't allow you to be at zero point, I guess, or neutrality because you care more about yourself and how you feel rather than fighting some crusade outside of yourself for someone else. Well, you're casting a vote. So yes. they're your <laughs> spell casting again. So it must matter the yes. same way as I, the election must matter alchemically or they wouldn't need to steal it. It just uh, wouldn't happen uh, here anymore. They just mm-hmm. wouldn't do elections here anymore. They would just be like, oh, you guys want a king? And they would just say it on the TV. Look at all of Americans want a king. And we'd be like, oh, apparently Americans want a king. And then we just have a king. But yeah. it must alchemically matter that we cast our vote the same way we cast a spell, the same way we podcast, <laughs> you know, yeah, casting right. matters. Cast is, yeah. And I think that it's the, um, it's free will, right? Mm-hmm. It what all I, has to be about free will. Yes. Because I, I guess free will exists. So I, I love to have that conversation with people like does free will actually exist anymore or did they, and I love using the word infamous, they cross the line. You know what I mean? At what point? Cause like, I think about when I was a hardcore liberal and I was brainwashed because I'd fucking forgotten because we live in an MK ultra world. We're all being MK ultra all over the place. I was like thinking when I was that Democrat and like voting for Hillary, I was doing the right thing. I truly felt in my heart I was doing the right thing. But with my free will, I was actually voting for someone that was doing things that are just horrific and horrible that I did. You know what I mean? Like, so is that free will or is that being tricked? Yeah. And then if you're tricked and you're, that's where I think it's like the loosing and your energy must matter. So then they plug into Kara and they make Kara convinced of all these things. And then she's creating a false reality for herself. And then they get to glom on that false reality and give you pills and make you feel sick and make you feel tired and make you feel all these emotions that I really don't think humans feel. I think. Oh, I love that you said that. I agree with you. I love that. Yeah, no, it's not natural. I've said that to people. It's not natural for us to be depressed and to feel like we want to give up and that we can't do this and to hate ourselves and to be mean to each other. I don't think it's natural to murder each other either. I don't think we naturally kill our own species when we're plugged into our hearts and we're vibing like we're supposed to and our channels are cleared and we 
we we we're all we would be we wouldn't I don't think the need or desire to murder someone would be there. I, I just think it's this trauma that's been created. I I don't I think that's kind of why they say the galaxy is watching Earth like a reality show and they're laughing at the absurdity down here. But it has to do with this brainwashing. Like I I really think it's this this brainwashing. Like is a free will being taken advantage of, or or is this idiocracy? Do you think humans are special? as far as all these other species in any ways? Okay, there's something that I've always liked, and that's like a, a mutt, like a dog that's a mix, you know? I always felt like they were healthiest, and they're so cool and unique looking, and I just love that about them. And I think the stars, the, the us humans, are actually like the mutt, where like, I, I like people will like to get attached, oh, what star family are you from? Or da, da, da. It's like, well I, well, I think we're a mix of everything. Like, I do think we have some reptilian. We, they talk about our reptilian brain. I know if you're bloodline, you might be much more pure or something. You know, I had or a like friend a- channel a reptilian for the first time and somebody um, like last week or the week before a Reiki energy healer. And mm-hmm. she said when she got to the person's eyes, she saw their eyes slit. And Ooh. she was like, "Woo!" And she backed out for a minute and asked her spirit yeah. guides if it was okay if she continued. Yeah. And they were like, "Totally." Yeah. And so she told the person, "Like, I'm reading reptilian on you." And yeah. the girl was like, "Oh yeah, I've had that read on me before." Wow. And yeah, so wow. it was like, "Well, there, yeah." And that's the whole thing of being able to say this isn't good or bad, just because maybe it was part of a past life or something. You can't blame yourself for that now. But maybe and maybe there is and there's good and bad and everything. There's reptilians. They say that are are with us or helping us or, you know, there's um there's just good or bad humans, whatever you want to say, good or bad. But it's a yin yang. It's a balance of energy. I would kind of be inclined to think reptilians are helping us because of how much bad rap they get. Even in, you know, anything yeah. visitors look like reptilian, you know, like that old TV show, the snake in the Garden of Eden's a reptilian. Um, they make they convince us dinosaurs are all scary, like, ooh, reptiles, reptiles, reptiles. I would be actually um, and if you look in ancient Egypt, some people think that the Sphinx used to be a frog, like a big keck. That's what they think the Sphinx was like. Oh, my gosh. Down. I've been wondering a lot about the Sphinx lately. What happened to its nose? Because its nose is broken off. And no, I don't think there's a good explanation why. Some people and, think Napoleon shot the yeah, nose I've off. Yeah, I've heard that. But then I heard maybe vandalism did it. And nobody really knows. And there's no confirmation. And so I tapped in and I was like, oh, I think that's a gateway. That's like a star portal. And I think it was like a. I think like eventually at one point, like the energies in Egypt, like because you look at the gods in Egypt and some people will say like the I don't know, like one group, like say the Illuminati or the Cabal, like worships Isis this way or or Cyrus this way. And then like you'd say like if someone like me goes, well, I look at Isis as a good. I see her as good. I like what she does or I see Orion or this is good. And so it's all about perception. But um, I think in Egypt, there was a shift because uh, the way that these gods, especially in that area, were worshipped, you know, both ways, um, there was a shift in power. And I think that I'm just saying I feel like that ties in with whatever happened to the Sphinx's nose. I think it might have been a fuck you to whoever was in power. Like, we're going to break your your portal here or say it was a frog. We're going to make it not look like a frog anymore. Like it got fucked with. Some people think that um, they've tried to look at it like maybe it was a cat, maybe it was a jackal, maybe it was this, but the way the legs are like so flat and then they've laid this big frog over and they say back when, when the Nile would flood out and so um, Egypt was super uh, fertile land back then. So anytime the Nile flooded, it would cause all this soot on the banks of the river and it would fill with frogs. And anytime the frogs were there, it meant a very plentiful harvest. So the frogs like magnolia the movie magnolia exactly the frogs? Right. Of that. Yeah. and even in uh, the story in the bible how the plague it started to rain frogs um it, that was one of the plagues in egypt is that it rained frogs uh it, that i think that was one of the things on the pharaoh before he lost his son where they put the lamb's blood over the door that was one of the big plagues that came to egypt beforehand so it's really um and then if you think of the kind of rain it actually is scientific possible for it to rain frogs um that movie adaptation or magnolia that i yeah. actually looked oh, I it love up adaptation that. Too. yeah i looked at I, weird that i just that movie was in i'm my, gonna watch that tonight actually you just said that also I was like, oh that's the movie with the orchids right yeah nicholas cage and that's a great movie i know i haven't watched that in forever and now Everybody i and tom needs to watch this cruise movie. 
Tom Cruise yeah. is in it too. It's another weird yeah. Tom Cruise. That was when he was on his stint of like Vanilla Sky, Magnolia. Yeah. He was just doing those good movies. Yeah, those I, I agree. Totally agree. And um, total change topic. But when you said Stargate at Egypt, like I could almost see the pyramids and the Sphinx being like a welcoming center at an airport. Yeah, wow. Like if there was a big portal that opened yeah. and people would be walking in and there'd be there these is. pyramids covered yep. with lime with gold tips just for like yeah. beauty. And you'd yeah. be walking in like, welcome to Earth. And you'd be yeah. like, ooh, what kind of experience am I going to have in Earth today? It looks so great <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, at that time. No, I'm just kidding. Great. It's gorgeous. This planet is stunning. Honestly, it is naturally like unbelievably gorgeous. I see why you want to stay here. It so quickly no matter what we've done, it can take it back. Like no mm -hmm. matter what yes. we've done so quickly, yes. the earth can decide in an instant to just the, the Hoover dam, the Hoover dam in one earthquake in a hundred years is completely gone. You know, it's just like anything that we think is this marvel is really, it's just the one natural disaster exactly. away from the earth deciding it's <laughs> no longer there. Everything's just one natural disaster away from being ruined. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's fucking great. Have, have you ever heard that. of um <laughs> I, that's what I always call my black ooze I'm like I'm just getting more uh, comfortable where I just want to play in humor. it like, I love it I, I, that's my humor I love that dark humor I picture a tiger like a tiger black and orange stripes <laughs> and then it's black ooze and fire mm. <laughs> and I'm like sometimes I'm feeling tiger oh yeah you got that you got that Leo energy for sure have, you're an energy in your um channeling have you ever channeled something about someone that you were like, Ooh, you were not good in your past life. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. talked to a couple of people that they're like, um, they're like some of the stuff I feel like we fight for in this lifetime. I know I've done in a past lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. And it horrifies because they can put themselves behind the eyes of one of their past lives. And so, they're like, I did such bad things. Like I was such a bad person in my past life. I had somebody who used to be very close to me that um, I channel I just channeled a few times and I had never not seen her as a queen or <laughs> like a high, high class person. Like, and not just that, it was like a channel lifetimes beyond this. And it was like everything about her. I was like, you were with whatever the darkness is. And I, I was like, you were a, you turned on the darkness though and you had had enough at the, what essentially I see things in metaphors often which makes it so much easier to think about stuff like she had worked with whatever negative energy creates negative energy darkness whatever you want to say and like what happened on this planet is there's too much negative energy or darkness however you want to define it you know it's just that's what it is with metaphorically and so I felt that she did have a heart, you know, as because you just because you're, you know, whatever, like she, she came to the light to be like to work with me. And like, I just it's really weird. I can't believe I was saying all this. But yeah, I um, but I love you can you can still really like I don't you shouldn't judge people for their past lives, especially if they're here to clear karma or like make things right, you know, in this life or help or like even these reptilians that have turned. There's a lot of them who have turned against what's going on because they you know like and it's just well, we should always leave room for compassion for people and always leave a space for people to change and grow and evolve um i think that's transmutation and some of the we do need to have actually this is really coming in strong we have to leave space for the dark anything you call darkness anything that anyone's wronged you or whatever we have to leave space for forgiveness right now because we're here to transmute the energy think about that when you forgive you're literally transmuting a darker energy into the light and we're here to balance you get that like we're here to balance metaphorically this planet out that's why we all really came here i feel is to feel feelings and transmute the energy collectively that's the philosophy planet. of christ that's oh, the okay. greatest <laughs> this is where um if you look at every religion like a philosophy it's we're really where christ to me love and forgiveness is the biggest philosophy on the planet if you can't forgive yourself if you can't forgive your enemies if you can't forgive whatever it is you can't move on from that thing. It's almost back to the, I don't give a fuck. You have to forgive them and let them go. 
before you cannot give a fuck anymore. Like you, t- you have to rinse it. You can't always harbor this hate or harbor this energy or harbor this emotion. They have like you've allowed them free rent in your brain. You have to forgive it and like rinse it. And um, it's kind of the philosophy I'm on right now is at the end of last year and to the beginning of this, this year, I realized I was a god and I could create things and I was attached and powerful and, you know, like almost the whole Ouroboros where I could see myself God in my whole lifetime creating everything to get to Cheney again, to die, to become God and doing like the whole Ouroboros of it. And then just in the last few weeks, I got my Christ experience heavy on my heart where, okay, you were a God. Now you're a God in flesh. And now you have the responsibility of being a God in flesh, which is so different. You have to realize you're God before you can have your Christ journey. You have, otherwise, if you just worship Christ as a God without ever becoming the God to be Christ, you miss all of it. You have to actually become the God, realize your full power, realize your full manifestation, and then go back down to human in this flesh experience to really love and forgive, to really experience what eating a fucking perfect oranges or making out with the perfect person or seeing the perfect sunset. You have to do it in your flesh, but you have to be God before you can be in your flesh. So it's Mm -hmm. like that whole, I think that's the philosophy I'm at right now is I'm having my Christ journey. Forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. Yeah. You're the the only one that feels that anger or that hatred or whatever victim thing that's happened to you. I'm sure it did. Not you, but like a metaphorically to anybody, like it happened. I always say that to people like, yeah, that trauma happened. You know, I'm not like discounting that, but like you just have to, I I don't know, totally. That's crazy. That just, that thought just whooped out of my mind. (laughs) And I know, I feel like it's, have you heard of scalar waves? No, tell me. I was, I, I don't know a ton about them, but I learned, I have a friend who's an insane researcher. She's always got like, let's, she's just like, it's amazing. And she talks about these scalar rays, waves that they, they come in just like that and they could pull a thought, I think, or they huh. can fuck with you. Somehow I think we're being like, I know you'll go here in your mind and you can, and I love that. Like, I think we're being messed with even in like ways of frequencies that we don't even see or energies we don't even see. Um, Radio and waves. Ex- yeah. And thoughts are dropping into our mind. Like, I do think you can implant a thought. And that's kind of came to me the other day. My guides showed me. They'll show me. Ra- they'll tell me the most random things sometimes. And I think they tell me, like, the most traumatic, like, scary things. That, like, when I'm just, like, waking up in the morning, making breakfast. And like, they'll be like, oh, yeah. You can. It's definitely possible for um, thoughts to be implanted or dropped in. And I was like, what? I'm like, what? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Have you ever heard of the should... voice or go- voice of God? See, this is why we're coming across at, at different. We're coming in different directions. And oh, <laughs> no, I've never heard of the voice of God. What's that? So the voice of God. Um, have you ever heard of Isaac Cappy? No. OK. Isaac Cappy is probably the most famous person that kind of got on the whole Pizzagate train. So he was like kind of a semi celebrity in Hollywood and he was doing videos and he was right along when like before Q all came out, when it was all still just Pizzagate, Isaac Cappy was out in all these names saying Tom Hanks was a pedophile, saying Seth Green was a pedophile, saying all the list of Epstein Island, every every celebrity. He's like, this stuff's going on. And so this dude um, ended up dying on Route 66, um, getting pushed oh. off an overpass oh. Oh. the same what? day that Tom Hanks puts out this um, very like a one glove with a Route 66 post because no. he, yes, because he always anyone who looks at the Tom Hanks if you don't know any of that he would always do these crazy posts of like one shoe or one glove or one oh, sock. What a creep! Yes, yeah, such I know a creep. What you're talking about. I was asleep when he was doing that. I remember wondering. Like, huh. And so Isaac Happy ends up dead. But before that, there was a friend of his that was like we were driving through the desert one night and it was just the two of them in the car. And she said in her her head, as clear as day, she started to hear, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Hold on. And it was fucking Phil Collins in her head. And she was like, I hear this. Can you hear coming? And she looked over at him and she's like, is this what happens to you all the time? And he looked at her like, 
you can hear that. Like, I just thought it was me. But because they were driving, they can direct it like a laser beam into your friggin' head. But because they were probably in this car or whatever, it was it was hitting both of them. So they were both hearing it. There is sounds like the same way you were saying visual fields go on all the time that not everyone can see. There's auditory sounds that are going on every time that not everyone has the ears to hear, but that stuff gets implanted in our brain and your head can hear stuff without sound going through your ears. And um, so, yeah, the voice of God is actually um, like a CIA, FBI, uh, or uh, MI6, one of these weird organizations. But they say it is a laser pinpoint accurate. They can just implant any thought in your head and almost run it like how a kid would have a string in a cup. And I could just talk in one end and put it right in your thoughts. That's what they can do with this. So Yeah, they've been, they've been fucking with us. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting – thank you for that. I've got a lot of information like coming through for sure on this like i'm being shown like it's like even though for me like they figure out your weak spot and, you know like when i i had an anger outburst issue really bad and it would just take one little thing to just set me off and i was just like done for for the night and i'd be fighting and it'd be awful or i'd cry or whatever and i'm just seeing how those little thoughts those little thoughts that would set me off was this fucking shit Mm -hmm. I really think we we've been targeted sometimes in a way. And this is sounding wild, right? Like this is wild thoughts. But where do those little thoughts come from? Where does the program really come from? Why are and targeted individuals? Why are we? Well, psychics. Or if you have something like a lithium or what else are they putting in you? Well, does that all of do you have a metal content now in your body that so what a perfect thing for somebody who already thinks they're crazy to make them more conductive to a crazy voice so they take more pills. Exactly. This definitely. And we don't know really what's going on, but it's sure good to think about the possibilities because we hate ourselves when we do these things. We act ways that's not us. Like, and what if they're implanting some of these thoughts? Like, what if, I mean, there's a lot of people who believe that people who have these conditions like schizophrenia, bipolar, these diagnoses, Shaman Durek talks about this all the time, that we're actually very gifted. We're extremely sensitive and schizophrenic people. They're seeing stuff. They actually are. They actually are hearing voices. Like, it's a real thing. Sometimes they're pure empaths <laughs> and are actually feeling every single energy in the room. Yes. And so how can one person walk into a room with 25 strangers, feel every energy without any awareness that they're taking in anyone else's energy and be okay? Yes. Yep. And they, what they do is they give you the diagnosis. You get into a system. Well, maybe you're watched then maybe you're fucked with then. And maybe like you're saying, these medicines are also designed to amplify. I don't know. What if we don't know if crystals work, we got to try it. We don't know about this theory. We got to try it, but it, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. I just lost my thought again. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> you said something else. Consent. Let me see if I can remember. <laughs> You're like, stop this voice of God, Isaac Cappy. Um, yeah. Wait, you said something. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. So you're gifted. You're you're targeted. And so actually you're really psychic. And that these are the people that they've been targeting for a long time. Because like you were said earlier, they can't, they, they can't, they don't want us to wake up. They don't want the ones who are really magical and really powerful, like, to wake up and and you know if you're showing signs of that already naturally and you get these labels then you get in their program and that like interesting thing is though i had been off my pills for a year i'm still in their computer i guess i was in their computer and when covid vax came out the rollout i was they i got a text from my doctor like before anybody i knew saying there was a vaccine with my name on it waiting for me and they wouldn't fucking give it up they wouldn't, I was like, no, 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 no. And I was thinking, I'm 38 years old, so healthy. Why would they be offering me more Saving stuff years. to probably calcify my pineal gland? You know what I mean? It's because of the, their target. I think you're targeted. A little it bit. makes me know. incensed talking to you. Like, I don't know anything that you're taking now or not taking or whatever. I'm not taking anything so, anymore. 
you seem like a very, I mean, I'm sure you could get off here and like horns could grow out of your head. But every time I see it, <laughs> you just seem like a very managed, reasonable person that the idea that you were on lithium makes me crazy. <laughs> and the amount I'm hearing yeah. of people in their spiritual awakenings on a regular basis that are getting. And I just use that one specifically because it is so heavy. It is so yep. heavy for yep. a body to handle horrible. the horrible. amount of people I'm hearing that are getting shoved lithium in them that are getting big racked by their families that are, I mean, this is all over the world. Like they, they're just like, Hey, I think wearing a mask every day is a bad idea. And their family's like, you're crazy. We knew you were crazy. And then they're just getting put in an insane asylum or something. And then lithium, what are we doing with this lithium being shoved into people? everywhere it's a poison I, when i was on lithium my whole body was swollen I, like i was like an autumn just like sausage being just swollen everywhere and every night like not every night but pretty much all the time i'd wake up in the middle of the night and go throw up it mm. was from lithium my body was rejecting it like a, it felt like a hangover or a flu every fucking night like for just all the time like and it's horrible you can't that's like lithium it literally slows your thoughts down did you ever feel suicidal um oh, <laughs> all the time none of it went away none, none of it, of went, it away. went away that was the problem that was how i found out like i got to the end of everything is like i maxed out i was on so many pills you couldn't i couldn't take any more pills it would have killed me like I, I, that and was you're what, a little person if, yeah, if any of was, you don't know what Kara Mosher looks like, she's I'm not a little really, lady. I'm 5'9". I'm <laughs> oh, tall. Oh, wow, you're tall. Yeah. And I, I weigh 144 pounds now, ironically, but I'd gotten up to like 205 pounds or something. Like, it was crazy. So I used to be pretty big. See, I would have guessed <laughs> like you were like a 5'5", five, five, a buck 20. But either way, yeah. that still seems the same were, frame as 5'9", yeah, 140. Yeah, you the same frame for me, yeah. yeah. How tall are you? 5'8". Oh, I knew you were tall. Uh, yeah, because tall girls like tall. We like you. each other, right? Tall. It's like a little <laughs> tall club. I actually was a photograph. I used to photograph a tall club. There was actually a tall club. Is awesome. is five eight tall? I think so. I, yeah, I'm yeah. always getting things off the shelf for people. Yeah, I am too. I guess but I have long arms too. I have really long limbs. Super long. Limbs. Me too. I'm long armed and long legged. Yep. Uh, that 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 you would never guess that I'm so long legged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. I bet my legs are longer than yours. I know you're five I'm gonna come nine. to Florida. Yeah, yeah, five nine. My legs are lo are, t are longer than my six three boyfriend's legs. Really? I'm like proud of it. I just like shook my head a little. Like, oh, yep, my legs are Me that and long. my long legs. My long legs. <laughs> That's what I'm calling this episode. Long fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna say, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your long legs with Kara. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't even know what you're talking about. It doesn't even matter. I'm talking about these long legs. <laughs> um, have you lost anyone that has come through to you? Um, what do you mean? Like somebody close to you, like a relative or Oh, oh, that's come through. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. My grandmother comes through, great grandparents come through, um, my stepdad who passed away comes through often. Um, my, uh, my spirit guide, my great grandpa Willard comes through all the time. Uh, he says he's here now. <laughs> that is awesome. I literally was just heard that. And like, um, he guided me in when I was born and he'll guide me back. We all have a spirit guide that does this, that guides us in to this world and guides us hmm. out when we die. We're never, we won't be alone when that happens. If you believe that, <laughs> you know, we are the creators of our reality. And, uh, but yeah, um, Definitely. And I've had lots like other, I, like if somebody wants me to tap into someone, I can, I can try, you know, and see if that comes through. That's more new for me. It's more like, I'll feel the energy and be like, Oh, I'm feeling this energy. Like I've had a, a friend's dad pop through and like, tell me really, I honestly, it was pretty amazing. Like this is when I was first waking up and realizing that I was could channel. And I was like, I got this vision of her dad who I knew was passed away and it was him in a picture. I was like, like posing for a picture and I'm like he had his hands a certain way and I told her and she's like that's uh my dad's uh mason picture huh and I go what's a mason and she's like it's a group he was in and I was like are they carpenters and he was like no 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 <laughs> and that's how I learned about the masons but she had never thought about her dad being a mason either and so it was like he came to me and like showed me that and then I could feel his energy with me but he wanted her to know that because we were both waking up and she didn't know the Mason about the Masons really either. Like she knew her dad was one, but she didn't really think twice about it. And so like, I've had stuff like that happen. 
You have to tell her this if you're friends with her still. I have this theory of the Masons that we demonize them now because we demonize everything that's good. We're living in the upside down. But if you really think about it, if all of our books and all of our history was always hidden from us, the only two ways for us to always make sure our history was relayed would be women would create bedtime stories to hide the history in to tell the children. That would be one way. I like that. And you'd have to be clever enough with the bedtime story so whoever your new husband or king was wouldn't be aware of what you were telling the child about your history. So it would have to be, like, so contoured. Um, I I forgot what I was going to say about men and, like, what they're doing specifically. Go on. The Masons? Oh, yeah, the the Masons. Masons. Yeah. What they're doing specifically that I think is so amazing. If men were not Masons, then they would have not been able to um, deal with uh, Masonic works and carpentry and um, Masonry. And so the way with Masonry is they would have symbols and they would have um, certain things that it might just be. Uh, a halo and a halo just might mean wisdom and so they would make sure they'd carve that halo in all the buildings so as far as everybody else was concerned we were just lowly mason workers put building Mm -hmm. the building but we could work and put our symbols and our signs and our history and hide it to each other so the masons would make sure that the history stayed there because if it was written in stone that means it was always if it was written on paper it could be burnt so Mm. So maybe mm, they were the good yeah. guys. Well, yeah, you're not. I mean, that's the thing is we don't know because everything's been skewered and twisted. And, and you know, I do feel that there's good and bad and everything. Like I said about even reptilians, even within us. Like, so that would mean there's good and bad Masons. I do have I have a friend that I met that, that told me he was a Mason. And I'm like, well, I love this person. You're amazing. I'm not going to just like. You're amazing. Your friend. Yeah, just because you're a man. I, and maybe it's because I woke up in the way I did. Like, I don't have these years of researching or being programmed one way about something. Or I don't know. I just come here to really love everyone. I do feel we can't make things disappear that people don't think work. We have to incorporate it and make it dance and put rainbow color over it and get everybody together, I guess. Right. And get along. I don't know. Whatever. But <laughs> if that's possible. But I don't know. I just I'm with you. I, I Who knows? There's good good or bad cult what it is but i do feel what i had learned about the masons was that a lot of these groups had been infiltrated these good these groups yes. that were good and so and that's what my friend and i talked about too and she's like do you think my dad is a good or a bad basin like what do you and i'm like i think your dad's a good guy like you know maybe he was in this group and he, he didn't realize like these little groups might not that are part of this bigger thing they might not realize what's actually going on. Like those Democrats, I think they're doing something good. They are, but they're not because there's something, I don't know. There's just things can get infiltrated and you know what I mean? Am I making sense? I kind of like your philosophy a little bit of, is it fair to be judged on your free will if you were tricked? Yeah. Like it, it, it is kind of that, um, I, there's something like a Christian school of thought is everyone on the planet will have the ability to learn about God and it'll be your free will of whether or not you kind of believe in him. Um, Then that's the same thing about bad stuff. If they convince us the bad is good, can we really be held accountable for it? Right. Right. I know. What a conundrum. What a a moral conundrum. We have to go come back to the Jesus thing of forgiveness and love. Yeah. You know, you just forget. I like have so much, I'm not angry at anybody right now because it's only going to hurt me like it's just about forgiveness and just yeah like we have to move forward to creation to be the creators let's create this new world let's stop obsessing about what didn't go right because you're just going to keep manifesting that and you're just going to get stuck in that and it's like you have to ascend above and like stop casting your vote and actually cast your energy on your dreams yes you have to be a dreamer like Mm -hmm. the the dreaming is and get your imagination back i think that's how we um, healing your inner child gives your imagination again, and your imagination is how we make the world better. Oh, did you just freeze?
much, Jamie. Hello, hello, you're back. There you okay. are. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, I was like, you froze. I was like, you froze and I froze. Hello? <laughs> and I was like, we looking at time my... traveled. I know. <laughs> if you could turn back time. Hey, we're back. Share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so um, let me see. Think, think, think. Let me have my little questions, my Karamotor yeah. questions. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. When um, so in your spiritual awakening, and you saw started seeing Ganesh, and you started seeing all these things on your friends, and you started when was it real? When were you like, holy shit, I'm doing this. This is real, and now I have to what take my gift and bring it to the world. Honestly, I really figured that out this fall, though I had been doing it for decades. That you're like, this is legit, and are you? Is it a muscle that you're getting better at using? Um, it is, it's just, um, it's been, it's like, as you clear your channel, as you wake up, like you, it just, and it, uh, everything gets in alignment. It just works better. Um, it, everything's easier. Everything's just more fluid and it's, it's just more like, um, yeah, I, 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 gosh, I just thought I totally like what, say the question again, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, the worst. We're the worst. I know. Today. We're not I'm even like, stoners. We're not even smoking. I know. I, well, but I'm not. Maybe I need to. Yeah. Yeah. No. You are like you're asking. Ask, you're asking if it. What, like when it was just real to you that you were. Oh like, yeah. 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 And then yeah, if it was well, a muscle that you got like better at using it. Yeah. Well, my third eye activated like really hard because it had been my my pineal gland had been calcified. That's what those pills do. That's what this. That's what they're doing is they're calcifying our pineal gland and. That ties to the whole gut milk thing too, because think of calcium calcification. I uh. think, but yeah, and so I mean, Chantel talks about. I talk about this in part one of psychic ability. She tells me and it, um, that my pineal gland was clean now. She congratulates me. She could tell. She tapped into that, and that's when I started seeing the visions more and stuff like that. But I would see like on psychedelics these spirits and stuff like Ganesh and all that stuff, like crazy things. I just thought it was on mushrooms. Like I just thought you know oh that's just the mushrooms it's no big deal so it was literally it's so crazy to me how asleep we can be or because I see it I saw it in myself like I was just like how did I not see I was channeling how did I how did I not think I just didn't want to tell people oh I talk out loud when I'm by myself on mushrooms like I like you know what I mean? It was embarrassed yeah, or something like that. It feels crazy. Like, I see, like we're taught I almost felt that embarrassed. Crazy. Yeah. Like I've been embarrassed to tell people that like I see spirits or I whatever. I don't feel like I don't know. That's what they program us to not see it. That's literally what they want. They want us to not talk about that stuff. And it really, so yeah, it really took Chantel and my friend Jade was telling me too. She's like, you're channeling. I was like, what's channeling? I didn't know what it was. Do you feel honored sometimes of the people you get to hang out with? Like yeah. for me, um, w- one of my good friends, like I got to be her grandma. Like I got to be her grandma. I got to like love her like her grandma loved her. And then it was like um, an honor that I got to do that. It was like, like a... You- like yeah. you tapped into a past life where you had been her grandmother. Mm-hmm. Oh, like no, okay. I legitimately just um, got like a vision. And like if I look uh, the way I hear people talk about lucid dreaming where they look down at their own hands inside their dream and they can control their dream. That's mm-hmm. what I the vision I got, except I was inside I mean, now I know it seems like I have all these words to put on it now, but it was like, you know, a huge awakening of like, what am I having this vision for? What is happening to me? Um, But yeah, I was her grandma. That's amazing. (laughs) I love that. I love that you tapped into that. That's yeah. Like, I mean, I don't um, have that. I, I I mean, like, you mean like just when I channel for people, how do I feel about it? Or like, do I feel, I, I do feel honored to be able to offer people this information. Like, I had no idea I had this gift. And then I do these channeling sessions and they're just, people come back to me later and they're just like, this is so profound. Or uh, I love it when I, in the moment I'm giving information like to somebody and they're literally like, oh my God, I literally had that thought just before this, or that's exactly what I want. Or I did that. I like, I I did do that. Or I, yes. And it's just like, I'm like, yes, good. Like I'm, this is, it makes me feel really good because I'm helping people. That's the only reason I do it. I'm literally just doing it to help people. And I don't know how much longer I'll do sessions because it's a lot. Like I, I, I love the, that's why I love the podcast because 
people can receive information just from listening to our channel information mm -hmm. or our downloads and stuff. And it really, the one, the thing I, I don't, I want people to really like see how powerful they each are, that we each have the capabilities of doing this for ourselves, of speaking to our guides, of seeing our past lives, of tapping into our magic, if we believe in that, or if we, I guess, I mean, I just want to believe everybody has these abilities. So I just, um, do you I, tap into certain people that you're like, ooh, their energy is fucking delicious. And then you oh, tap into yeah, other people and yeah. you're like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. So I know my guides won't allow me to do a channeling session. Like it literally won't happen. It will cancel or something mm. like that. It just won't happen. And I know they're protecting me from somebody's energy. Um, I love it when I have a session with someone who's amazing and just full of love or like they... I receive information like healing techniques for them or like I'll like like I learned about this god ish ish tell I X like C H E L this Mayan goddess because she came through for someone I channeled for today. I didn't know who she was, so I got to learn about her. Like I'm learning about all the sacred knowledge that's been hidden because I'll hear it in my head or I'll see it and then I'm like, what is that? And I want to know more. Or this healing technique's coming through and I'll be like, we have to do this right now. It's time to flush your meridians. Let's pull this energy through and I get the healing. You know, though it's coming through for that person, I receive it. So it's, it's really cool, like in that regard. But there's times when people will ask me about something and I tap in and I can feel from a distance before I energetically like tap in that it's not good. Like it's not going to feel good. And I just stop and I go, that's a, that's good. I'm like, I'm like, that's good. That's good. That's good. Like I got what enough. I got enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can, you don't, you can dip your toe into that's not right for you without having to dive into this is why, like, just trust me. That's fucking not right. Like when you get a feeling like that, you just, you don't want to tap into it. It's like, um, you're sometimes you're like walking in a street at night and you're about to turn left to go home, but something gives you chills yep. and you're like, I'm not going to take that left. I'm going to go right instead and take the long way. Um, spiritually, it's kind of like that too, where you just get yes. that gut instinct that I shouldn't, uh, for me, um, I, the protection is where I usually get those, um, instincts where it's just like, I'm leveling up. I'm now in a new realm that I'm not prepared to be in. And I'll get a really big wave of like, why don't you do your prayer bowl? Like the same way where you would pick up a stone and you'd be like, I don't know what this does, but it kind of makes me, I'm like, I don't know what this prayer bowl does. I know the sound really feels healing to me. I'm just going to do it. It feels like I'm cleansing something in the room. And I just try to be very <laughs> intentional of protecting myself, especially doing this. It's not for everyone. Um, it's weird that both times we've gone on, I have ended up shower and meditating before right before the show that it's just happenstance because we did it in the morning last time and we did it at night this time and I ended up doing a late run tonight which I haven't ran in a while and then it just like went through this flow but it lets me know that um your energy is so my my energies are so comfortable with yours that I didn't have to do anything kooky. I never got any sick feelings. Even the way this all came Ooh, about. I love it. Was yeah. Like, yeah. Can we, do we, can we do this tomorrow? Yeah. Cool. That'll work. Is this time? Great. Oh, enjoy your day. Cool. See you at the, it just felt <laughs> fluid the whole time. Like it never gave me that, the agita of like, Oh, I hope it's a good interview. Oh, I hope it's a good, like all that stuff. I, I'm sure you have it too. When you're like, Oh, yeah. all that. I just didn't have it coming on with you. No, I felt like, I love it. to be honest, I feel the same way. Like I felt the exact, that I mirrored that I think energy meets energy. So we're both feeling the same way each other is feeling like often I think in situations when someone knows, I think this is going on with that, with this situation. Well, you're probably right. Cause you're feeling it and they're probably feeling the same thing because energy meets energy. And so, yeah, this was, it was really fluid. And this is the way I think the world's evolving to is a more understanding, flexible way of doing things. And yeah. you also use your hands a lot when you speak. And that's <laughs> so, um, there's so many, I don't know what, I know there's like mudras, mantras, yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm but there's stuff. like hand symbols. <laughs> and I know the like. I am holding my hand a certain way you can't <laughs> see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I do this all the time. This like I'm portaling in an energy. Oh, that's the Donald do Trump diamond on his lap. Yes, well, that's he, what he's, he's doing magic. And so, I mean, I definitely move energy with my hands. I do stuff like I see myself do stuff all the time, even in sessions, like I'll just start doing stuff. And I had past life doing um, this energy healing, this West African energy healing. And when I had my shaman session and my spirit session with Shaman Durek, he that was activated. 
and I, cause I saw my hands just start doing this stuff and I was just watching it all. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what am I doing? And I was being shown like, you can do this care. Like we can all move energy. Like energy is being hidden from us guys. We're, we're en- when you master your own energy, you can master the world around you. Yes. That's what being a witch or a magician or an alchemist, you're Mm -hmm. just owning that you can control the energy. Yeah. It's crazy that these words scare people. And it's like, you guys can't see that you're being scared of your power because that's part of programming. Like I have a friend who I love and it's okay because we disagree, but she, she's like, I was calling myself an emotional alchemist. She's like, be careful using that word. And I was like, why? I don't get it. Like why? And she's like, because uh, the Bible says, or da, 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 or something about alchemists or spirits being demons. And it's like, if that's the way you're seeing the world, that's in your reality. But in my reality, an alchemist just means I can transmute something. And if I'm transmuting something that I felt was negative or traumatic in me to love, then call me an alchemist. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm, I like spiritual alchemy. I think that's what we're all doing here. I think when you connect and cast whatever way that you're (laughs) casting your voice out for other people to hear it or you're paying attention by giving them your ears. I think we're spiritual alchemizing each other into our better selves. Um, And even when you say like you're going to less channel and get into the podcast more, I really believe that exact same way as somebody would contact you for the message that they needed to have and you would sit down with just them and you'd relay that message, this, me and you sitting here and doing this, that same energy that they need to hear listening to a show is going to find them in the same way as them because it's energy and it's out there and it's meant for them to find when they're supposed to find it. So it doesn't matter if they're sitting with Kara Mosher alone or they just happen to stumble across her on project Cheney and you know, they, they hear some words they were meant to hear from her. Yeah. It was going to happen regardless. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer in fate and you're going to attract what you need. If you ask for it, like this has really come through, especially in the last, um, I just dropped the psychic abilities part two. a uh, Kuan Yen goddess. Kuan Yen can't has come through really strong right now. And she's a goddess of love and compassion. And she hears, uh, the prayers of those who want healing and I went to her temple on mushrooms once I told like she took Kuan Yan took me in her temple. And it was amazing. It felt so good. Like it was, I didn't want to leave. And uh, I, I did though. I had to leave. And uh, I told this to Chantel, my medium. And she was like, oh yeah. She goes, oh, I'm confirming. Yes, that did happen. You did go mm. there. And because you've been to the temple, you can take people there. And so I talk about it in the podcast and I could feel Kuan Yin's energy coming through. I can kind of feel it coming through right now, to be honest, just saying this, but what it is, is she's come out and she said like anyone who wants to be healed right now in this world, like you can be healed. Just ask for healing. You, your path of healing will unfold. What's her palace look like? Her palace is a Lotus. It's a golden Lotus. That's what I saw, but it was mostly the feeling of it. The feeling, it was like um, beyond this world. It felt um, beyond this third dimension. And if I had this golden, like for me, it was all golden. And it was like, I was sitting on her Lotus and I could feel um, the Lotus like petals kind of almost like the chair behind me is how I saw it. And she was over here to the left and I could just, she was golden. Everything was golden in there. And it was, um, but it was really the feeling in my body. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to the recording of Chantel and I, when we talk about this, you can feel Kuan Yin's energy. And I, I list, like, listen to it. It's amazing. It will come out. You will feel it. And, and if you want people, if you want healing, just ask for it. And you might find yourself listening to this podcast right now, receiving healing. It, it just, you, path, all you have to do is ask and the path will unfold for you. Do you pray? I pray like in the sense of talking to my guides or, um, connecting with myself and my spirit or offering love to this world. I pray, I guess the strongest way I pray, it would be, I go to the piano because I'm a musician and I connect with Sandals and I ask to have everything. I, cause he, he was like the one, the, like the mu- God of music. And I asked for what, what was I, his the, name? Sandalton. Okay. And I ask for the music I'm playing to be amplified through the universe. And I offer an intention like love to the world. Or I say, I want everybody right now in this entire world to feel peace. And then I focus my attention on the piano and I improvise and I play a sound. I send a vibration into the world and it's a couture little prayer 
I literally will let that vibration out into the world. And to me, that's praying. That's how I pray. I pray with vibration by offering mm -hmm. love to this world. And I know vibration is a real thing. Wow. So, your prayer would help others meditate. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I've, oh. I looked on your Instagram at some of your, um, I think one of them was like a meditative tone thing you did on the piano. And mm -hmm. that was really um, neat. Like, or it, it, it sounded like auditory, like you'd almost could mm -hmm. get like, um, there's like a certain sound you need when you're meditating. It's kind of crazy how just shutting my eyes and hearing those sounds that it reminded me of like, uh, when you're kind of quote unquote blasting off on DMT, all the real world sound leaves you and you get this yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> It's like prayer bowls all of a sudden <laughs> that I'm like weird. It's like beyond. I know. I <laughs> follow the sound. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely like, um, I know there's a uh, rhyme to my music. Like there's a reason that I play what I play and I channel that when I play, I, I'm, I hear this, the note I'm supposed to play right before I play it. So I'm literally like just playing. And I don't know where that comes from. Right. Like if you create music, like where, like you could have a song, I can be at the piano and like 30 seconds. I, I also, I play a riff and I'm like, Oh, there's a chorus. And then I like get a couple chords. And I'm like, Oh, there's a verse. And I hear the lyrics in my head and 30 seconds. I've got a fucking three minute song written, done like bam, bam, bam. And that feels so good. When you write something like that, you create something divinely like that. It's amazing, but you don't make that up. That comes through divinely, right? That's channeled. That how do we create? You know, that's what Sia, that um, artist who wears the bag on her head, she just kind <laughs> of like, and she's a writer. She covers her face all the time. Um, I'm sure she's probably part of the evil they, but um, she writes all the songs <laughs> for like Rihanna and everything. She wrote like Chandelier. And um, so when she's, when she's, uh, I'm, she must be channeling, but uh, it's almost like the lyrics aren't there yet, but the tone is there and everything. And she has the one word. So she'd be like, but a chandelier here's from the chandelier here. And it's like the words aren't there yet. It's just like a, like a, she's grasping, but she knows what big word is everywhere yeah. that it's supposed the to be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The theme. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty. Okay. Before I get you out of here. Um, what do you think of sex magic? I think sex magic is definitely a real thing. Um, I know it's being used on us with movies, um, and TV in ways, um, all the time. Um, also celebrities are using it. I, I don't know why, but I keep thinking of Chrissy Teigen. I feel like she mm -hmm. uses a lot of sex magic for some reason. She grosses me out. Um, and, um, I think that, I don't know why, but I'm just thinking of the negative ways sex magic is used right now. That's what's coming to mind. Um, and I say negative because um, I think that like, if say these people are pedophiles, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Chrissy Teigen sure tweeted some things. It's really weird about children like being attracted to them. And have you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so um, why is it, there was a time where I noticed where I'd like, saw because I used to follow her old Kara mm -hmm. who was asleep followed her you know bless our hearts some people don't realize you know and you just asleep and I just remember like for some reason I would see her face and I would almost get like turned on a little and I was like why does that happen I'm personally I'm I'm turned on by is it sexually for by men mm -hmm. it's just the way it naturally yeah. is for me so I was surprised to feel that like I think a woman's body's beautiful and I I am a photographer I've done boudoir sessions but you're a I straight did, woman you're like did, I'm not yeah I did figure but yeah and so I knew that it, I, I was seeing this my guides were showing me this as I woke up for some reason Chrissy Teigen was really coming to mind and it was like you're and they were showing me like she's got her self kind of programmed for all of us to sort of like maybe be turned on or whatever or a certain group that does and that turn on, what if that's like that moon stuff, even like it's a um, sending her magic or sending energy to her. You get what I'm mm -hmm. thinking every time somebody. So that's what I think of when I think of sex magic. I, my mind just goes there. Uh, I didn't. Um, something I'm just um, orgasm seems like. And you're it's such a loud expression of sound and instant fucking gratitude so yeah. it just makes me think if you're with the right partner and practicing the right magic how powerful that moment could be for manifestation for you and your partner mm, okay uh, yes 
Yeah, no, I actually, I do, um, yeah, I do consciously use my orgasms to help manifest things. I do, I learned about that. So that is sex magic that's positive. So yeah. How long have you and your partner been together? Are you partners? Do you, is that a yeah, word? Yeah, we're partners. Eight years. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've been together yeah. a good amount of time. Long time. And yeah, so he's he been there before your awakening. Yeah, yeah, yep. He definitely, you know, <laughs> I know he this? loves me because, and also through the bipolar diagnosis, I met him right after I was diagnosed bipolar. So he saw me decline. He fell in love with this girl uh -huh. <laughs> and then she lost herself. He, he I could cry. I might. Um, but yeah, he had to watch me lose myself. If you could only imagine what that was like for him to be in love with someone and watch them just turn off and then turn back on. And then and turn like that, back on to so a much whole new place yeah. where he had to re-meet me. I had to re-meet myself. That's I had to re-meet myself. Fantastic. So and we're still together. So and he's waking up in his own way. The whole world's waking up in their own way right now. So Wow. Is he so, wild. does he feel so blessed? Like when you guys are together now, if it's, um, is he like, I'm so fucking grateful to have you back. Like when he looks at you, when you guys make eye contact, does he know no, you're there? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do that, but he, I, I know he is. I know he is. It was, it's like almost like we, you know, I missed you. It's good. To, yeah. It's good to have you back. Um, it's been wild for him though, because like, you know, now I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm channeling interdimensional beings and, um, <laughs> Uh, like Donald Trump's not as bad as I used to make the memes about him last spring and just like all, everything about me's changed but I'm the same person like I think that was a there was a real transition like uh going on for a while this fall I didn't you know I, I it was one day at a time for everybody going through awakening when you're in a relationship like that and one person wakes up all of a sudden changes it's just you got to flow with whatever happens I don't think there's enough um in the world of everyone I know, you know, a single or, you know, everyone's like, oh, it must be nice. Well, at least you have a partner, Kara. At least you're, you're married, Chaney. Well, you know what? Going through a spiritual awakening with somebody isn't the fucking easiest thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's all. easier no, to go I through it, it alone. Would, I think it would have been easier to go through alone. I really My do. Poor I wife, know you're talking I say, about. Bless her heart. I know that's how I feel. I, I thank you, Jody, all the time. And I'm like, you're the one that like, pushed me to my edge. I'm so grateful for that. And like, you saw the worst. he saw the worst of me and now he sees the best of me. And, and he and I have huge past life connection, dude. We go back way far and I tell him the stuff and he's like, I don't really know if I believe in past lives. And I'm like, that's cool. I didn't in September either until I started seeing him. I'm like, but our cat cliff was our lion and his name was Ninny. And we had, we worked at a circus in India a long time ago and all this stuff. And he's just, and he kind of listens and, and um, sometimes I like I'm, I'm like I'm like Jody. I'm like all these people want to do channeling sessions with me and stuff, and they think it's really changing their lives. I'm like, do you want one? And he's like, no. I'm like, you know, there's people <laughs> that would really like one of these channeling <laughs> sessions. I'm like, do you want to do psychedelics with me? I'm like, people would really love to do psychedelics with me. He's like, nah, I'm good. Like he's just so not. He's like the bit. He's like the dude in the Big Lebowski. He's super chill. He's just really easygoing. He's I'm I'm a lot of energy and I, I'm also I'm talking a lot about him. I just realized that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. I <laughs> I um think sometimes it's perfect for girls that are dharmas. They have to find a Greg. I actually <laughs> just said this aloud to somebody today. I'm like, oh yeah, you you seem like a dharma. You need a Greg. Yeah. You need it's like sometimes when you might float or fly away, you need this like grounded fucking person to yep. just keep oh, you yeah. like your me. balloon oh yeah i'm I, yeah definitely he's definitely grounding for sure big time uh, yeah i i love him so much he's amazing i'm so grateful to have him with me in this life and um yeah and he's evolving. a good he was a good dad to ninny and now he's a good yeah his name's cliff dude this cat like I met him when I was on DMT. He was an entity that came out of the line of stars that I was in, which I believe was um, right outside of Vega. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cliff came out as an entity, but and like spoke to me. But I it didn't look like a cat; it's like an entity. And then like a few years later, I was doing mushrooms, and Cliff like, like animals. This was when like I could tell telepath started telepathically communicating with animals, which is super cool. I fucking love that. That's a superhero thing that I love that I can telepathically communicate with animals. I, anyways, but. I was talking to him and he told me that he was that being that met me in DMT and that he came back down here now. And actually he told me this actually is wild because he told me this today 
that I portaled him in when I saw him on DMT by bringing him into this conscious realm. And then his soul was able to come into the cat's body a couple of years later. Um, but so this cat, like, and he was Minnie the lion, mm. like I, he's a powerful cat. I had, um, my first DMT, I've only done DMT twice and they were about 10 years apart. My first DMT, I had a foo dog, a big, it almost that cat face come through really heavy to me where, um, I kept trying to put that. I just um, got chills. Did you just see that? I just like, moved. <laughs> it was really weird. I, I keep going. I thought you saw it too. When you were saying that about Ninny, I'm like, Oh my God, I've always asked. I want, I wonder if anybody, if we have the same spirit guides or if our spirit guides work together. Together. And um, every time I try to put a representation of that statue in my life, it breaks. Like I'm not allowed to have it. But when you said Whoa. that for some reason about your cat, I'm like, I wonder if that's Big Bubba, POTUS, my big cat now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, mm -hmm. they do. They're all because I think these energies were all coming back and meeting each other in other lives. I mean, look at us. We must, girl, we know each other. I've said this before past lives, like for sure. I will never let you burn again. That's Thank what I you. Know I was sure. just going to say, I know we were in a coven. <laughs> I know. And do my friend went to Salem recently and like sent me this little video of some of the graves. And I saw this name, Mary Parker, and she had died on September 22nd. And I just started crying. And that's my birthday, September 22nd. And there's just something like feeling like seeing the graves of these women that were hung and these pressed and drowned and made me cry so hard because mm -hmm. I was like, these are my sisters. Those are my mm -hmm. sisters, you know? not it okay does. like it, it, yeah. it touches some part um just how many times we and I, I'll say just me how many times I had to stand in silence and watch like my sisters get burned because I just wasn't at the meeting that day or I was just married to the right man or I was just happened to be in the right cast of society that they would have never expected me but I was totally with them and I just let them burn and I kept it quiet or I let them burn because I was powerless or I let them burn because I was fucking in a dungeon or I let them hang or I let them drown because I, you know, couldn't do anything else. But this lifetime, this timeline, <laughs> like, <laughs> this timeline, you it's on. Which is backs. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I also feel like everybody's coming into their own, even dudes that were no playtime with me that were all in the logic of researching. They're like, okay. I want a wizard staff. I want to play LARPing yes. with you. I want to be yeah. a Jedi. <laughs> I want to be a Yoda. Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes. I want to play. Yes. I want the force. Yes. Yes. Right. We have it's to like, play again. Yep. Yes. I brought my she toy out yesterday and like, I just like I filmed. The, I was like, this is, I love my she toy. Like I have toys all over the place. I have things that inspire me. Like that's where we, when we allow our imaginations to go wild and have fun. And that's where the amazing things come from. Like even some of the depths we've gone in our conversations, we were just playing with ideas. And well, if you never thought that, then could it have been possible? I don't know. What's Shira's quote? I know He-Man's is, I have the power. Oh, I don't know Shira's quote. She must have a quote. She must. Yeah. And uh, Shira, she what was her must. horse's name? I don't know. I don't I know remember. either, but I, I remember, remember watching I that cartoon. She, I know. And uh, it's a, like a unicorn or something. It was a horse that know. turned into like a Pegasus. Yeah, and then that's right. Yeah, he man right. had like a tiger that turned into like a war <laughs> tiger or something. <laughs> that seems like something you would like a tiger that like animal like that. I was actually like, oh, I would love that tiger with all his like <laughs> armor I know, on. I I'd be that. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, longing for that. Yeah, and I want that Pegasus. Um, I said just the Let's Be Friends podcast, but feel free to plug anything that you want to plug. And I know there's um, you have a few podcasts. Um, yeah. So yeah, plug it all, plug where people, if they want to get a reading, if they want to hang out with Kara Mosher or any place that you've been recent. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there's the podcast, like you said, let's be friends. And then I have my YouTube channel, Kara Mosher, which I put all sorts of stuff on, um, lots of like tips, life, how to manage life, like manage these, uh, this awakening and ascension and podcasts, um, videos and ours was on there when you were on my podcast and also guided music meditations which are literally created to activate your dna <laughs> so do them <laughs> for everybody and then um my memoir here comes trouble is dropping in like three weeks i promise it's publishing this month it's so close to being done that's really the whole reason that i'm out here talking is for this book 
that I've known I was supposed to write for like two decades. And it was, so that's it. Here comes trouble. Can I suggest that when your book comes out, you do a YouTube release party and have a whole bunch of your guests come on that day and just do like a. I love that. That's a great idea. I love that. It's perfect. That's what Truezilla just did for their like one year anniversary. So I think you should just do it for a celebration of your book. Like everybody's been on this journey with you. I love that. I love that. That's, That's a great idea. Especially, like, I've been thinking of virtual ways to do things. We live in this virtual reality. Not for too much longer, though. I feel like we're all... I I think the amount of energy that we've all built up being internet friends and the amount of energy that sharing these Mm -hmm. secrets and sharing this vulnerability and healing from our traumas and all this, it's, like, all behind this thin plastic sheet right now and we're all about to touch in the flesh everyone's about to meet everyone else and when that energy just fingertips touch it's gonna be it's gonna change the world so yes yes it's gonna be super intense i can't wait i can't wait to give you a hug me too me too and i'm not even a hugger but i'm totally gonna hug you oh you're gonna hug me (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna pull you in (laughs) <laughs> I, you're you're a good long hugger, and I'm gonna be like, who would have thought Kara Mosher's taller ah. than me? <laughs> <laughs> That's such my butch lesbian that I'm like, what? She's taller than yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm taller than most people, most women. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Watch out, guys. I'm tall too. I have long legs. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I loved it. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you back. Thank you guys for listening. And I love you too. We love you. All the love. All right. Bye bye. Bye. So she has been Cheney and now she's off to smoke a blunt. See you next Tuesday, you fucking cunts. I am and I feel like I'm always napping. Like I am I'm I don't really sleep. So You just <laughs> Yeah, I, I love it. I do like three hours here and there. Do you watch High Maintenance or have you ever seen the TV show High Maintenance? I have totally se- I maybe watched an episode or two. There's a episode about this guy that does this whole lifestyle where he sleeps just in naps. He never like what what you're talking about. There's like a it's a quantum way of living or something. Oh, it's like the something sleep method where they every they they're up for four hours and sleep for fifteen minutes yes, or thirty that's minutes it. or something. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that.